Good afternoon and welcome back to the um, Pasco County Board meeting. Uh, please remember to silence your phones. Um, we are now, am I back on? We are now going to uh, proceed with a public hearing starting with ordinance P82. Item P82 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on February 2nd, 2022. Okay. Madam Chair, Commissioners, Denise Hernandez, Planning and Development. Item P82 is PDD 220068. This item was advertised as a continuance to the October 25th, 2022 Board of County Commissioners meeting at 1.30 in Newport Ritchie. Okay. Can I take a motion to continue? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No? <laughs> You're going to mess me up. No. Um, okay. Uh, so we vote under discussion. Oh, I apologize. Um, this actually, yes, we did actually off, hot off the presses. We did receive this request hot off the presses to a date uncertain. The applicant will re-advertise the, the item. Okay. Uh, here just doesn't say a date. Did we just say a date? Yes. She, she I did state a date, a date but okay, it's so actually to we, a date uncertain. The, chain, uh, the applicant requested just that. Just uh, the mover and the seconder. Yeah. Okay, I'll make my motion to, a, um, to continue to a date uncertain. Yeah. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. P83. Item P83 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on July 6, 2022. All right. So as my PowerPoint is coming up, this is the first reading on this item. This is PDD 220454. It's an ordinance by the Pasco County Board of County Commissioners amending the Pasco County Land Development Code, Chapter 1100 Special Development Standards, Section 1101 Vehicle Dealerships and other sections as necessary for internal consistency, consistency providing for applicability repealer, providing for sever severability, inclusion into land development code and an effective date. The reason why we're here is because on March 8th, uh, Board of County Commissioners adopted a temporary moratorium on the opening or establishments of vehicle sales bus businesses. There were some concerns, including overstocking of vehicles on site, and those were causing safety concerns. Staff studied the issues and met with stakeholders. Our first meeting was on April 13th, and our second meeting was on June 8th of this year. The proposed ordinance before you clarifies the applicability of the section it breaks down the section into the following uh, general standards for sites approved or established prior to <coughs> January 25th, 20, 2005. The reason for that date is because that's the first time that the vehicle dealership ordinance was established. In that section, the changes are just generally cleanup language, and that cleanup language is mostly resulting from the type, the change to the type H buffer. As you may remember, the Type H buffer used to be a 75-foot buffer. Now it's anywhere between 20 and 40 feet. And that was changed in Amendment 55. The board adopted that on May 3rd of 22. Then the next section is additional design standards for sites that were approved after August 25th, 2022. The reason for August 25th, 2022 is because the, this item is expected to be adopted on August 24th, so that's just the day after the adoption. Um, for, that's why that, that date was ex, uh, taken. So um, to break that section down, there's a section on employee and customer parking. There's a one of four methods that can be chosen. There's also a uh, vehicle inventory and vehicle storage section that basically allows surface level inventory, that uh, calls out surface level inventory and display combined with ground floor of area of buildings and structures to not exceed 50% of the developable acreage. Vehicle inventory and vehicle storage cannot occupy required parking spaces. Vehicle inventory and vehicle storage cannot encroach into the right of way, landscape buffer, wetland, upland buffer, or drainage pond. It has to be delineated on site plans. And then there's also allowance for triple tandem rows or quadruple tandem in certain instances. There's also requirements for pedestrian connectivity. Then there's the next section is basically standards that may be used by vehicle dealerships, whether they were approved prior to or after August 25th, 2022. These are all landscaping related. As we were talking to the, um, and I wanna say thank you, Commissioner Starkey, for 
bringing the stakeholders together. As we were speaking to the stakeholders, they were basically stating, well, some of the trees that you require could damage our vehicles because they might you know, uh, release some, some pollen or fronds or whatever. So there's uh, standards that may be used in lieu of the standards in 905.2 and 1102, which include um, outdoor display and buffering standards. And that recognizes that certain species of shade tree may create hardships for vehicle display areas, allowing the substitution of understory trees for shade trees. Also for par parking island landscaping, recognizing that certain species of shade tree may create hardships, allowing the substitution uh, for understory trees for shade trees. So these items were presented to the Horizontal Roundtable Interested Parties meeting on June 15th and July 20th of 2022. Um, and they were presented to the local planning agency on July 21st, 2022, who found the request consistent with the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan and recommended approval to the Board of County Commissioners. Today, there's no action required by the board. We're just asking that you accept public comment. <coughs> the, this item is scheduled for adoption on August 24, 2022 at 1.30 in Newport Ritchie, and I will say that that is before the 180-day temporary moratorium expires. So we did, or are trying to meet our promise to you. Yes, and board members, we've had um, numerous meetings with you know Larry Morgan, Scott Fink, um, with um, Rich Beckish, Rich Beckish. Um, with the, um, Furman's, we've, we've met with all the dealerships and we included a representative from the used car dealership um, world to make sure we were hitting the new car dealerships and input from the used car dealerships. And, um, and I think we've done a great, I think you've done a great job. So. I do wanna also extend a big thanks to Brad Tippin who was instrumental yes. in putting this together and also a, a Gratitude to Elizabeth Belair from the county attorney's office. Yeah, this is such such a big improvement and you know requiring 75 feet of buffering uh, and kind of a suburban urban setting in many places was just way too much and and, um, and changing some of these rules for the trees is good and um, But you know, we don't want the dealers parking cars in the driveway and if you've seen these many of these used auto dealers where um, you can't even walk onto the onto the property, never mind park a car. Um, it just was out of control and we really needed to, to get some rules in place. So I'm very grateful for this. There's no action required. It's, um, public, it's hearing. public hearing. So we don't have to vote on it, but if, if anyone here in the public wishes to speak, um, now's your time. I have no one signed up in person or on WebEx. Okay, well, thank you very much. We'll um, hear this again when? This will be August 21st. 24th, 2022 at 1.30 in Dade City. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so now we're on, let me keep my notes here. Now we're going to the addendum and we're going to P176. Item P170, P176 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on May 18th, 2022. I don't know if I've ever been at a meeting where we went to 176. We're actually going to 180 today, so interesting day. If I would clarify the past one, I, one of my colleagues said I said Dade City. It's August 24, 2022 at 130 in Newport Ridge. Okay, I thought, sorry about okay. that. Thank you. Okay, 176. 176 is the amendments to Chapter 18. On um, Florida Building Code. It, the, Who's reading the, this one? The two, two BCS items. Where's this item? I know, I didn't have it it's in my book, agenda. so that's why I didn't want Barbara messing my up my schedule here. Um, so do I need to move? Do you, okay, looks like Sally is gonna present this item. And also the following one, is that correct? This item is asking for a continuance to our August 24th hearing. Um, chapter 18 is going to be considering oh. items that are going to be considered as a part of um, the Land Development Code, Section 1104. So it was appropriate just to continue that to hear at the final hearing when you consider both items. Okay. Um, so I'll take a motion to continue 176. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
All right, uh, 177. Item um, AP 177 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on May 18th, 2022. 177 we had got an approval for continuance um, from the prior hearing this item is to be considered today for the first reading um, only and it will have a second adoption reading on August 24th 2022 so it will be heard today okay who's presenting Esther's behind you Esther, Esther. yes Good afternoon, Chair and our board members. I'm here presenting the AP 177. Uh, that is the chapter 11. Uh, that's BCS 220270. My name is Esther Odriani, Director of Building Official for Pasco County. Uh, amending Land Development Code Section 1104, Flood Damage Prevention. Uh, we're here before you this afternoon uh, next slide, please, and uh, the next one. Uh, this is to amend the 1104 flood ordinance. Pasco County has been the, the strategic plan that was just approved in October 2021. The goal 1.1 of it is to promote and participate in the National Flood Insurance Program. That being said, Pasco County has been a member of the National Flood Insurance Program since November 18. 1981 and the purpose of this membership is to allow our citizen to purchase federally backed flood insurance and also next slide um, we've been a member of the crs the community rating system since october 1 1992. the purpose of the community rating system is to allow us to get a discount for our citizens Right now, we are, a, we are rated six, and with that, we have 20% discount for our citizens. And um, this afternoon, we are presenting the flood zone map that has been approved by FEMA since June 2020. We want that to be adopted locally, and in, in so doing, we want to give you the overview of where we are as a county. Uh, yes, we are CRS class six, premium discount is 20%, and we have roughly about 20,000 policy older, 19,015 as of 2021. And for these as citizens, we give them a savings of 3.1 annually due to our rating as a six. Next slide. This slide is showing us what it could be and what it is and where we could get to. If we don't have discount, uh, a, a residence in a coastal V zone, annual insurance is about $8,000. With class six rating as of today, they get a savings of about $1,500 annually. And if we are ever to get to a class five, they will get a savings of almost $2,000. Uh, anybody in zone A gets, as of today, a savings of about $1,400 annually. And if we get to, uh, to class five, they will get a $1,289 savings in, in, in the insurance, in the flood insurance. Why are we here? There is a mandatory regulations that FEMA is putting out that if we don't adopt, we will automatically fall to a nine, a class nine. And that means zero discount for Pasco County citizens. There are four bullets on this uh, major requirement. Number one is to adopt the new FEMA flood insurance map that is already adopted approved and in Florida building code since June 2020. The second bullet is to eliminate the 36 inch option for manufacturer homes. The third one is the wet proving of large agricultural structure. That means any structure that is over 600 square foot. 
And the fourth one is to standardize the use of market value that is for private appraisals. So I'm going to take it one by one to explain what I mean. Number one is the flood map. And adopting the flood map into our local ordinance is a formality. It's already in the Florida Building Code. So whether we adopted it or not, we're still enforcing it as a county. And number two is to eliminate uh, the 36 inch option for manufacture home. This is to maintain our class six rating. If we don't get this, uh, this bullet passed, we will automatically go to a class nine. The smaller, the better. When we go to the higher number, that means uh, the discount that we get gets smaller. A nine is a zero. So uh, the third bullet is that of wet proving a large agricultural structure. This is in the FEMA bulletin that is already in existence. That means any large agricultural building that is over 600 square foot. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you will see what I mean. Ordinarily, they will have to raise these, uh, these structures to a BFE, to a base flood elevation. But now, FEMA is saying, well, you can wet proof by just providing those uh, openings. And once you have the flood openings, the water can come in and out of these structures without having to ele elevate them. Uh, the fourth <coughs> point is standardizing the use of, uh, of appraisal in flood zones. That is the use of the market value. Uh, there are two options to evaluate structures in flood. We can use the property appraisers uh, uh, recommended uh, uh, what is on their website plus 15%. Or you can get a private appraisal to give you an level of what you have. But with the private appraisal, now this is standardizing the use. It's not comparison. It's the structure before improvement is made. And, and this is for just solely for private appraisal. This is what this is about. So the next one, regulatory changes. This changes is not mandated. It's not required. We are bringing this forth just to be able to solidify our six rating. Uh, we are hanging on to a six by a trade. So by bringing this forward, also this also benefits our citizens. This is what we get almost uh, at least once a week. We get a, uh, a complaint about this. And this is the non-conversion agreement. Structures, that is the number one. Structures that are in V zone, in velocity zone, that are on pilings. The lower level can be used for storage and uh, most of the time it's, it's non-occupiable. So what this is saying is we want to have a non-conversion agreement with homeowner that they will record this uh, with the deeds, that this lower level is non-occupiable. And this is giving the next homeowner uh, heads up that what you're buying, the lower level is non-occupiable. That is the first one. The second one is the critical facility. The critical facilities is uh, a definition that has been approved by this board since 2003. And it's in the definition of the land development code. But we want to bring it into the body of the code. And what this is saying is when visible, and this is when visible not to locate critical facility in velocity zones. And for instance, there are definitely times that this will have to be. If you have a police station and there are enough people in that area that really needs to have a, a, a police station, absolutely it will be. They will just have to elevate it to BFE plus two feet. So, and this is, Plus two, yes, in, in velocity. 
and for critical facilities. But what we're saying is we want people to explore, is there a possibility of not locating it in velocity zones? For instance, another example is a nursing home. If you have a nursing home that is in velocity zones, and now the, during hurricane they have to be evacuated, I mean, most times they will have to go to shelter. Going to shelter, they might have people that are not skilled, that is now looking after them, having caring for them. So if it is possible not to locate it in velocity zone, and this is what this section is about. So um, now is the first reading. No action is required except public comments. The adoption hearing will be August 24th in Newport Ritchie. Any questions? Okay, um, and thank you. I know you guys have been working hard on this. Um, this is uh, a public hearing and we can take a comment from anyone here who wishes to speak. Are you wanting to bring something up, Anthony, that wasn't touched on? Um, Mr. Chairman, we just have to read in the advertisement for this item, is that correct? I'm sorry, what's the question? Do we read in the advertisement as written um, for the presentation? I don't think you have to read the advertisement. And, you you know. have to read anything? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, board members, any questions? Um, I'll wait for public comment, then I'll comment. I think there's okay. at least and one person that wants to speak. Commissioner Oakley, I thought the east side would be uh, following the rules for the agricultural buildings. I don't know. Um, you know, having to do the wet, what do you call it? Wet flood proofing. Wet flood proofing, so yes. hopefully they're all aware of what's coming. That's for um, structures over 600 square foot. Yeah. Yeah. But if people so, big... Okay, I see um, we might have someone for public comment. Yeah, like RV garages. Okay. Would be fine with that. Barbara Wilhite, 63, 27 Grand Boulevard, okay. Newport Ritchie. Um, on my own behalf, <laughs> I don't represent any clients. I've kind of taken this on for years as a labor of love to make sure that as we change and update this particular ordinance that we don't have unintended consequences that actually sets the county back. So I have been, my partner in crime has been John Moody um, and uh, him more on the technical side and teaching me the things that I have learned. And we have skimmed through this in detail and staff has spent many hours with us. Um, there's a, I think the critical facilities, I understand the explanation that was made. I did have a question about that, but it looks like that's just going to apply in the velocity zone, which makes sense. So if it gives you any comfort that you've had a couple people spend hours and hours and hours on this with your staff to just make sure that there aren't unintended consequences, the leadership has been outstanding. You know, uh, from the beginning when I raised my, my hand at the horizontal round table and everybody in the horizontal round table were like, oh, please just go away. Um, staff has taken our... Uh, input as collaboration and not as an annoyance. They've treated us like partners. And uh, so I can bring this, you know, stand up here and say, I think we've, you know, not that we're perfect, um, but I think we've, we've uh, got all the unintended consequences out of the uh, ordinance and you can move forward, your staff can move forward to their FEMA audit and we should be in a pretty good place. Yeah, um, and I would echo what Barbara said, Barbara and John. Um, worked diligently on this and staff i've had multiple meetings with staff on this and i also called um other builders and folks in other counties and um, talked to many commissioners from other counties about this so i feel pretty comfortable with what we're proposing today commissioner mariano yeah madam chair same thing uh, staff has been very good working these things through the points that were brought up you made the changes that need to be changed so we're pretty much modeling what the state and feds have done we don't want to put any extra burdens on our people either, at the same time stifling uh, redevelopment up along the coast as well. So I think staff's done a great job. Barbara, thank you to John, the other folks that were in, the, in, the, in it as well to make sure we got this right. Those last two things are just noted changes that aren't necessary, but they don't do any harm and one probably helps our citizens understand yes. uh, what, 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 the, what their ramifications are too. Yeah. So I'm comfortable so. with it. Okay, so there's no action today. It's the first reading, is that correct? So, yeah. so what Anthony was trying to do, I think, is read the title of the ordinance into the record, okay. not the not the advertising. Okay. So let's let's get that cleaned up. Thank you, sir. 
Okay, board. Um, <laughs> an ordinance by the Pasco County Board of County Commissioners amending the Pasco County Land Development Code, Section 1104, Flood Damage Prevention, to bring the county's flood damage prevention regulations in line with the model ordinance approved by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and to coordinate with Chapter 18, Buildings and Building Regulations of the Pasco County Code of Ordinances, amending the Land Development Code, Appendix A, Definitions, and other sections as necessary for internal consistency. Incorporating FEMA's most recent flood insurance study for Pasco County, establishing areas of special flood hazards, recodifying building official to perform analysis for building permit applications on structures within flood hazard areas, and providing method process for such analysis, requiring signed declaration of land restriction, non-conversion agreement, for projects proposing to enclose areas under elevated buildings, certain crawl spaces, and certain accessory structures. Recodifying county approval for letters of map changes to FEMA, recodifying encroachment, development, and fill on properties within floodways, adding and or recodifying restrictions on location of critical facilities, yeah. detached structures, mobile home, uh, manufactured homes, RVs, park trailers, tanks, decks, patios, and other development in floodways, recodifying FEMA guidance, publications, and technical bulletins by reference, changing variance procedure from planning commission to hearing officer process, requiring data to be provided in areas identified as sheet flow and ponding, providing a variance process for certain agricultural structures, additional specification, specific findings required for variances, providing for or amending the following definitions, <coughs> accessory structures, agricultural structure, critical facility, declaration of land restriction, non-conversion agreement, existing manufactured home park or subdivision, expansion to an existing manufactured home park or subdivision, flood hazard area, historic structure, Letter of map change, LOMC. Market value, new manufactured home, park or subdivision. And trailer, and park trailer, park model. Providing for applicability, repealer. Uh, providing for servability, inclusion into the land development code, and an effective date. All right, thank you. And I, I did have one last question. I, I didn't get this in my book for whatever reason. So I, I am looking at all these addendums online. Um, I had asked at our last meeting that we be referring to the Florida Building Code specifically. Did that make it into here? Where applicable, we say, did, did that make it into the ordinance in those lines that we talked about in my meeting? Because I, I don't have any of my notes here with me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I got yes. in late last night. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah, it's okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, any other so, questions? So in lieu of the motion that's within your agenda package, the motion for this would be accept public comment, which you've done. No action okay. is required by the Board of County Commissioners. As this is the first of two public hearings, the second hearing, the adoption hearing, will be held on August 24th, 2022, at 1.30 p.m. in Newport Ritchie, right? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So now we are on to 178. Item, P 178. item AP 178 was published in the Business Observer, July 15, 2022, July 22nd, 2022, and July 29th, 2022, and August 5th, 2022. Good afternoon, Denise Hernandez, AP 178. This is an item that you will be adopting by roll call vote. It's an ordinance establishing the Deerbrook Community Development District pursuant to Chapter 190 Florida Statutes, providing for authority and power of the district, providing for powers and duties of the district, providing for the Board of Supervisors of the district, providing for the district budget, providing for functions of the district, providing for miscellaneous provisions, providing for an effective date, PDD 220510. We're asking that you adopt this ordinance by roll call vote. Uh, okay, does anyone wish to speak to this item? Seeing no one, it's a roll call vote. And I just want to put for the record, there's no one on WebEx for this item, okay? Motion to approve? No, no. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, give me a second. Just a second. All right, roll call vote. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 3, Chairman Starkey. Aye. 179. Same procedure, guys. Item AP 179 was published in the Business Observer July 15th, 2022, July 22nd, 2022, July 29th, 2022, and August 5th, 2022. This is PDD 220511. On this item, we're asking you to approve by roll call votes an ordinance establishing the Palmetto Ridge Community Development District pursuant to Chapter 190 Florida Statutes, providing for authority and power of the district, providing for powers and duties of the district, providing for the Board of Supervisors of the district, providing for the district budget, providing for functions of the district, providing for miscellane miscellaneous provisions, providing for an effective date. Okay, um, does anyone wish to speak to this item? We have the C, we believe we have the CDD council online, but we don't know if he wants to speak. There he is. Okay, hold on just a second. One second, we'll unmute you. If you had support, you might want to be quiet. <laughs> We might unmute. We might. Has he been elevated? Can we elevate the um, person yes. online, please? He's good. Okay, thank you, Eric. He's over there. I still have the. Uh, <laughs> I okay, have you should be good to go. No. Okay, th thank you. Can you hear me okay? No, nope. cannot hear you, sir. Well, look, I see it's still muted. Still no, that's ours. Oh. Are you in support? Wait, go. You, Are you in support? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, there, okay. we can hear you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I'll accept a motion. Ma'am, just for the record, so we had uh, one of the reasons I think this early wine is, is on WebEx. It, this is 179, so we had somebody sign up. Um, Mr. Parks is not on WebEx. Was he in opposition? We don't know. Oh, we don't know. Okay. Well, no one's here, just you. So we're going to proceed. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to, that's in chambers that wishes to speak? Or forever, hold your place. Okay, I'll take Go a motion. Ahead, take so a move. Motion. move for approval. Second. I'll um, roll call vote. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 3, Chairman Starkey. Aye. Okay, 180. Thank you. Item AP 180 was published in the Business Observer on July 15, 2022, July 22, 2022, July 29, 2022, and August 5, 2022. This is PDD 220512. On this item, we're asking that you adopt by roll call vote. It's an ordinance establishing the Whisper and Pine Community Development District which is pursuant to Chapter 190 Florida Statutes, providing for authority and power of the district, providing for powers and duties of the district, providing for the Board of Supervisors of the district, providing for the district budget, providing for functions of the district, providing for miscellaneous provisions, providing for an effective date. All right, is there anyone here that wishes to speak to this item? Anyone online? No one's online for this item. Um, I'll accept a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, roll call vote. District one, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District two, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District four, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Aye. District five, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District three, Chairman Starkey. Aye. All right, now we are on to P84. Madam Chair, on this one, um, as I understand it, P84 and P96 will be heard consecutively. Can I go ahead and do the publications on both? Yes. Yeah. And let's, the, the attorney doesn't have to stay with us if he doesn't want to. Bye. <laughs> okay. So, item uh, P84 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on January 5th, 2022, and item P96 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on, Janu on June 22nd, 2022. Okay. Good afternoon, Amy Heiler with Planning and Development. Uh, item PDD 22-0020 is a comprehensive plan text amendment. This is the adoption hearing for CPAL 2125 Cross Park PD. As you see here, this is the, lo the subject property, which is located in the South Market area. It does look like we're missing a slide um, for this one. So uh, I'll step back just quite a bit. On this one, you are, uh, as I said, adopting the proposed amendment. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the ordinance into record. 
an ordinance amending the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan, providing for a comprehensive plan text amendment to subarea policy flu 7.1.11, Cross Park PD, and providing for additional text amendments as necessary for internal consistency, providing for a <coughs> repealer, severability, and an effective date. Um, so as previously stated, this is the adoption hearing for that. The proposal, applicant is proposing a text amendment to subarea policy flu 7.1.11 to change existing ALF rehabilitation, uh, assisted living facility entitlements to multifamily residential and commercial uses. Uh, the location is at the southeast intersection of State Road 54 and Henley Road, approximately one mile west of Land Lakes Boulevard. The resolution to their proposal is to amend the, the sub-area policy as previous, previously stated, um, and there is a proposed substantial modification to the existing Cross Park Master Plan Unit development accompanying this project. So these are the following policies that, that the proposed comprehensive plan is consistent with. The general location, as stated, is at the intersection of State Road 54 and Henley Road, approximately one mile west of Land Lakes Boulevard. The existing future land use is PD flu, uh, which allows for an assisted living facility and rehabilitation, uh, commercial and office uses. And as previously stated, the applicants were requesting to change those entitlements to multifamily and uh, uh, office retail. So here is the master plan that has been provided. As you can see, there's two access points, um, one off of Henley and one off of State Road 54. Secondary access for emergency is off of Henley. Uh, go a little bit deeper into the master plan. Um, so the portion along the frontage along 54 is proposed for medical and professional office. Um, they are proposing 45,000 square feet in this general area. And the multifamily, which is proposed set back from State Road 54 um, and is buffered by the non-residential uses, which is supported by a policy directive um, from the board. Uh, this area is going to be proposed mixed-use multifamily with 280 dwelling units, uh, 10,000 square feet of non-residential, which 5,000 of that non-residential square feet will be vertically integrated with the multifamily, and then the uh, rest of the 5,000 square feet will lo be located along the um, frontage of State Road 54. And with that, we recommend that the BCC approve the proposed amendment and adopt by roll call vote. If you have any questions on the plan amendment, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, board members, any questions? Well, Madam Chair. Commissioner Moore. I think most know my opinion. Um, I'm just trying to uh, make a decision on, uh, we're gonna hear Snotty Six right after this? Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, we need, again, going back to statements I've made on multiple occasions, and I don't know how many occasions along 54 or 56 <coughs> corridor, anytime we change a, a zoning and, um, to, for example, multifamily, when we're going to lose job creating sites, um, it concerns me and will continue to concern me. Um, whether I'm sitting up here uh, or I'm a citizen out in the like, I'll be soon. So I'll still have those concerns and continue to have those concerns. So with that, I'll be voting now. Okay, um, anybody else have any comments? All right, um, is this a public hearing? Would anyone um, here like to address P84? Okay. Hi, Elise Batzel on behalf of the applicant live development. Um, just to follow up on Commissioner Moore's comment, um, we did do a job creation analysis and did submit that into re the record. And if I'm recalling the number correctly, because of the 45,000 square feet of medical office, as well as the additional retail that we're providing, we are increasing the jobs by 76 based on what was permitted before and, and what we have now. Um, if you have further questions for the applicant, please let us know. And just as a, a, a quick housekeeping item, I think Amy mentioned a different number. It's sub area policy 17, just for the record. Okay. And um, I've driven Henley many times. I'm pretty sure there are there's no industry down Henley. It's all residential. So you've got the industry up at the front, because right across the street is Stanley Steamer. And I think there's a church. Yes, ma'am. Um, and we'll go into more detail. We, we're happy to put a more uh, descriptive site plan up, if you'd like. We also have the three levels. We can show that a little bit more in the next um, presentation, but we just don't want to be duplicative with your time. Yeah. 
Okay, so. Um, well, Madam Chair? Yeah. Thank you. Because um, this isn't public comment, this is the applicant, so. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So make sure we're on the same page here. Um, okay, you said you, you did an economic. Pardon? You, you said you did an economic analysis, analysis of t some type. Um, when it comes to the jobs, it's, it's included in this it's presentation part of the that record, you gave yeah. us too. Um, and I'm sorry, yeah. Amy says that the analysis is the build out of the proposed sub area policy would render 93 jobs. So, I said 76. Yeah, I think that's one of the th one of the things we were kind of debating, you know, last time around. With you know, okay, if you're taking some of this and adding additional office, you know, compared to what you were previously, um, is it still more jobs? Again, you know, I, you know, my NALF is one thing, but a nursing home is another, right? There's more jobs um, in a nursing home than there's NALF. That's just, that's a fact of the matter. And it's gonna matter how many beds you have as well in that ALF or um, in that uh, nursing home, you know? So I guess that's a question to be asked too. We don't know that, right? Because you don't have a user. You don't have somebody that's coming in to say that I was gonna build a, 350 bed um, ALF and a 200 bed um, SNF, which would be a nursing home. No, I'm just using that as a point. We just don't know that answer. So I appreciate the economic analysis. Don't, not sure if I can agree with it 100%, knowing and actually coming from that industry myself and being in the industry for a long time, knowing how many jobs for nurses, PTs, OT, speech language pathologists, CNAs, administrative staff, et cetera, could possibly be in that. So again, I'm not telling, telling you it's wrong, but I would question it depending on how large that facility actually is. And if it's a full SNF with an ALF or if it would just be an ALF versus you know, a SNF by itself. You know, it, that's, those are things we have to come into the equation. But again, so again, appreciate right. it. Not saying you're wrong, just saying I can't say this is 100% accurate with not knowing that, um, that the answer to those questions. We actually uh, do have at least an indication of the end user, and it is 45,000 square feet of medical office, not office, which typically generates more jobs as well. Um, and I'm happy to have Tim from Live Development come up and tell you at least what he can about the user that he's speaking to, and I think he's pretty far along. If you think that would be helpful. I don't, I don't, I think it would probably be better for 96 than this, don't you? Mr. Steinsteiner, I think that would probably pair well with 96 versus Versus, uh, well, if you're, I mean, if you're approving the comprehensive plan amendment, yeah, okay. and that, Good. and that this goes to whether or not that changes your opinion, I would, I would hear the testimony. That's now. fine. That's fine. I didn't know if we wanted to wait for ninety six, but I'm fine with that. Yeah, I guess because, and I remember that this developer also builds. Didn't he? Doesn't this developer also do ALFs? But yeah, I, I think maybe if you, remember, if you recall, and Tim's going to tell you a little bit more, he looked at the viability of an ALF. Yeah, because they could do that. They would do that. All right. Without all this. <laughs> Good afternoon. Tim McEachern with Live Development. Um, when we were before the board at the transmittal hearing, I went through the process of showing uh, both the new development and the site plan and the viability of it today, but also going back on the history a little bit. About three years ago, we looked at this property specifically as an assisted living facility. We have a senior housing group here at LIV. We went through the process of doing a viability study, market study. We found that there was um, a number of other projects coming on that would provide too much supply. Then we faced the COVID pandemic and that was uh, problematic for our development of this property as an ALF. Since we last met together uh, and we had the successful vote on the transmittal hearing, we have gone out to the market to gauge interest on the medical office component. And we're happy to say there's been a lot of interest in that. Uh, there was expressed interest from the board that there may be you know, uh, local use for this property. We have found that use, we found those users, and they're very interested in, in finalizing our contract with them. Um, I would, I, I'm under an NDA, so I can't state who it is, but it is a top five hospital group that is looking at the property uh, to do a medical office in a, in a standalone emergency room. So there's very significant use for this property, but it's all subject <coughs> to us being successful in the comp plan and also the zoning. Okay. Um, all right, anybody else? Public comment? Uh, yeah. Uh, any public comment? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, Christy Zimmer. Do I need to give you my address? Yes, you do. 3615 Pinecone Court, Land of Lakes, Florida. I'm opposed to this project because it is supposed to be an ALF or ILF, but the problem we're seeing is are there going to be any traffic improvements no. required on this project? because 
when you're putting this kind of traffic out onto Henley Road or 54 without any infrastructure improvements, you're going to have some problems. I would ask that you at least please have them put in traffic control devices of some sort within that intersection if you do approve it. Okay, so we'll hear if there's any, um, that is a red light already, right? There's no light. No, they I will be adding oh. a light though. Okay. Correct. And paying for it. And Correct. this is the comprehensive plan hearing. So yeah, that's yeah, that'll be not addressed on the, and that's a condition of the MPD. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Madam Chair, just to let you know, no one is on WebEx for this item. Okay. All right, seeing that then, it is to the board. Motion to approve. Second. Is it a roll call? No. It is. Oh, it is, it is, it is a roll call. Is. Okay. Motion to approve and a second. second. Yeah. Okay, roll call vote. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Nay. District 4, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 3, Chairman Stark. Aye. Okay, then we are on, now we are taking 90. 96. 96. 96. 96 is the companion. Yep. Oh, it says 95. And just on that item, just so we can say on record, uh, the supplemental report that you have in front of you for that, there was just a brief modification from that during the transmittal phase. So I just wanted to make sure that that was on record with this item and the agenda. So just so you all are aware. All right. Okay. So going into the MPUD. So uh, you'll now be hearing the associated MPUD with the Comprehensive Plan Amendment. This is Cross Park MPUD, PDD 22-7632. As you can see, it's located in the South Market area, Commissioner District 4. We've seen the visual of where it's located off of Hendley and State Road 54. A lot of these are repetitive, so I'll go ahead and fly through them. Um, the proposal is to request a substantial modification to the existing Cross Park MPUD Master Plan Unit Development District to allow for the development of 280 multifamily units, 45,000 square feet of medical professional office, and 10,000 square feet of retail on approximately 20.916 acres. The applicant is requesting the following variations uh, to LDC 805.6 restrictions on post-development wetlands and upland buffers within residential lots and non-residential parcels and LDC 902.2M uh, for stormwater management requirements as well as LDC section 901.3 access management. Um, with those uh, variations, staff analysis has determined that the variation request meets the intent of the code for the first, for A, um, because the LDC seeks to place those operational and maintenance responsibilities of open space, drainage areas, common areas, landscape areas, wetland areas, buffer areas, preservation, conservation, recreation and park areas, and other special purpose areas under the responsibility of a single representative entity um, for the entirety of the parcels. And then B, staff supports this variation request due to the requirement causing an impact to the existing category one wetland, which would be inconsistent with, with policy identified in the comprehensive plan and the intent of the code. So I've already shown you the master plan with the access points as you see. And like I said, these are gonna be repetitive. So the, multiple, the medical professional office located along 54, the mixed use multifamily with the vertical integration, and then the various findings of facts. Um, so the project will have access from State Road 54 uh, located on the northern edge of the development and Henley Road to the western edge of the development. Uh, Planning Commission heard this item on 721 and voted unanimously to approve the proposed <coughs> modification. The future land use is currently PD and there's an accompanying comp plan amendment to this uh, proposed MPD as we previously heard. Approximately 18% of the site is a category one wetland which is identified in the MPD master plan and Cross Park will utilize this feature as an amenity um, to the proposed multifamily development through the establishment of trails and open spaces. There's adequate transit options with various bus stops located along State Road 54 um, and the conceptual uh, plan trail for the Suncoast Parkway which is uh, from Suncoast Parkway to Oakstead Boulevard, which is identified within uh, Pasco Mapper and our Greenways, Blueways Trails maps, is also identified on the master plan to provide a connection when that is constructed. Um, and then the proposed request is consistent with the Pasco County LDC Chapter 400, subsection 402.2 zoning amendment, MPD, master plan unit development, and the applicable, applicable provisions of the Pasco County comprehensive plan. 
So with that, we recommend approval with conditions. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have on the um, PUD. Um, anybody have any more questions? Okay, this is a public hearing. And, uh, Hi, there, Madam Chair, yep. sorry, just, just one question for um, the team, um, county team. Um, you know, okay. Multiple occasions, it's, you know, it's been brought up. We did a study and such, which oh, and this afternoon, if you, if you stay tuned, I'll maybe bring up another reason why that study was wrong that was presented to us, because we actually have some new numbers to share. Um, but I won't do that now. I won't bore the people that will be leaving. Um, but you know, so from your perspective, you need, you know, approval with conditions. You know, you know, eventually, you know, along that 54 and 56 corridor, if you as a team and as staff continue to make these exceptions, there's a good chance, you know, like I said before, all you're going to see are apartments lined up on 54 and 56. Is that the vision? I don't think it is, but is that the vision the county staff has now? Because, you know, you're again you're constantly saying, okay, this, this we're going to approve this. We, our recommendation is to approve. But are we going to continue to see these? Every time one of these comes up, again, we lose another job creating site. We lose another job creating site on that major corridor here in Pasco County. I mean, are we going to, is this is going to be the norm for the next 10 years? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Victoria Espito's Planning and Development. Uh, I think the answer to that question is the comprehensive plan itself. Right. Um, there are policies in the comprehensive plan that direct and guide how development is supposed to shape up in the South Market area along stable 54 and then we also have board direction given to us um, how to consider uh, multifamily development when the market proposes it on particular properties in order to preserve those employment generating land areas on 54. Um, so when, when a proposal is made to us uh, as in the as in this case here um, we look at it and seek to find ways to preserve that employment generating land use and make sure that if, if there is a multifamily component to it, it is put to the rear as the board requested. So just in your opinion, um, what's more important right now to you as a planner? Job training sites or more multifamily? Well, I'm, just, I, I'm not sure no, that's a fair Yes, question. it is, because this, <laughs> this is how they make their determination, Madam Chair. So I'm asking, this is their opinion yeah, well, what's important? And the comp plan, we've shown in the comp plan on multiple occasions why it doesn't always meet the comp plan, at least I have from the dice myself. So I'm just yeah. asking this question for the record. Well, I, what's most important to me is the implementation of the comprehensive plan. Right. Um, I can only respond to what the marketplace brings in, uh, in reference to what the comprehensive plan is saying. Okay, I'm not going to get into in the weeds too much with you, but uh, we've had those discussions, and I've had them up here before, on how jobs are better and meets the comprehensive plan, in my opinion, more th better than that does. Let's wipe it out and switch them out, but especially well, along a corridor like that, where it's, um, you know. But uh, we have heard the board, um, and we worked uh, particularly close with the applicants in this project to meet the board directive, to ensure that there's employment generation taking place on property. Uh, on properties that do propose multifamily. So it isn't the case that we simply accept a multifamily project on 54. We look at is it, what are the viable alternatives here and how do we uh, get those to be present on 54, being the, the viable alternatives being the employment generating land uses. And it has to be done in a way that makes sense from a site planning perspective, which is what we tested against in this case but also from an economic development standpoint, which we worked with the Office of Economic Growth to determine, um, as we did in this case. So the Office of Economic Growth, just out of curiosity, if they think it would be better to have the multifamily than additional jobs. That's and Madam Chair, did they, <laughs> what is the amount that they, of jobs they increased on this by increasing the square footage of the medical unit. I don't know why you keep interrupting me today when I'm still waiting for the answer to my question. Well, there's, there's, is, so did I'll the J, did the economic, the Office of Economic Growth comment on this? They did. They commented that the uh, Category 1 wetlands constrained the property significantly, and they determined that the 45,000 square feet of employment generating land use here, which would generate 93 jobs, um, what and actually, I shouldn't say 45,000, it's, it's more like 55,000, which was half of the existing employment generating entitlement, um, was sufficient for the amount of acreage that remained on the site. 
after you took away the land for the Category 1 wetland. Okay. Madam Chair? Yeah. Um, you know, just if there's any doubt, I think this board said it many times. Well, I don't think we're looking for a lot of apartments. I think home ownership, I think, is great. Whether it be townhomes, which is, I think is superior, single family homes superior to that. But this corridor especially, whatever we can do to generate jobs, what we want to do, uh, if you feel you need to bring a project like this forward, don't be think. I don't think you want, you want to think we want any more traffic out on 54. There's not going to be a lot of relief, though some things will help. So if you have to look at a priority, I would rather have you work very closely with David Engel, EDC, PEDC, and find what incentives you can get to get better job creating things. I mean, this project is better than what it was. They did make some improvements on it to create some more jobs in the retail going underneath. That was good. But I don't want you to think for a minute that I don't think we're pushing for apartments. But, uh, right. Understood. Madam Chair. Yeah. So moving forward, we would like to see more job generating activities. Well, and they know, they know that. That's why. I've been saying this for five years. Well, and we, we've done that when in certain areas. When, when If someone wants to come in and they're allowed to come in with a storage facility, we've said, no, push the storage facility in the back, put jobs out front. And I think they've done that here. They put the jobs out front on 54, and they put the residential in the back. Um, it'll be across the street from other residential, um, so we won't get that complaint that we're getting in, in other areas. Uh, so I think this is a, a good compromise. Um, and uh, take a motion. Well, no, you still got you still got the applicant in public, in public yeah. comment. Oh, okay. I thought I asked for that already. <laughs> Does the applicant want to speak? Okay. Just very briefly, uh, Elise Batzel, Stearns, Weaver, Miller. Uh, could you put the presentation up? I'm not going to run through it. I just want to show a couple of slides to address a couple of the transportation issues from the community. And while you're doing that, I just want to remind everybody, and I know not everyone was here when we went through it, but we had the, we're following the guidelines from when the Urban Land Institute came in and said, your, your comp plan promotes sprawl and you need to focus your density on the 54 corridor or you're going to have to really raise taxes to provide services spread out all over the county. So that is what our comp plan says. It says put your density on 54. And, um, and I know we're going through some revisions now and this board and the public will have an opportunity to weigh in on how we want that comp, that comp plan to look going forward. But this is what we're following now. So go ahead. Madam Chair, motion to receive and file for this project, please. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Um, so just briefly, I know that AB set forth how everything is laid out. The areas in red, they weren't very clear on the black and white site plan. Those are additional uh, yeah. retail and employment generating uses vertically integrated within the multifamily building. Yes. Um, again, because it's constrained by the wetland, there is only so much that you can do on this site. With It's odd shaped. There's a very large wetland which we are protecting completely. We made a number of changes to the site plan based on input here, input from the community. I'm going to skip over these. Oh, let's go back to transportation. I went the wrong way. Whoops. I'm sorry. I, uh, bottom. Oh, that's why. Let's find where we are here. All right. I think there, you went through it really quick. Yeah. <laughs> Do you by chance have the comp plan up rather than the MPUD presentation? Oh, there we go, transportation. So I just want to make sure that you understand what the developer is doing to address the transportation issues. First, we will be paying a prop share payment of $350,000 that will actually go towards the signalization and intersection improvements at State Road 54 and Henley. Uh, the county is going to install the signal and we're going to receive mobility fee credits towards the roadway and SIS portions of mobility fee. Um, the maximum amount of that credit would be 75,000. Um, we are also doing significant site access improvements. That's adding 350 feet of an eastbound right turn lane at the driveway access off of State Road 54, 
as well as a 195 foot southbound left turn lane at the driveway access off of Henley. Um, and with respect to the concerns about traffic, we had our traffic engineers look at the proposed entitlements and what traffic that would generate on 54 and Henley versus our proposal. And there is a significant decrease in the trips that this project will generate. Um, and that does not even count any internal capture that may happen between the pet center, between the retail and the multifamily. Um, your guidelines under the ITE trip generation and your county methodology don't allow us to take those into consideration. So it may in fact even be less than that. Madam Chair, that's a yep. question. Thank you. You just mentioned that the previous proposal would generate more trips than your current proposal? That's correct. Okay, so now I'm really confused. <laughs> <coughs> Commercial so, typically generates more than yeah. residential. Yeah. Look at the chart. And our, our transportation is engineer, engineer is here. If you have specific transportation no, no, questions. I, 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 no, I'm just asking if, so you're saying if it would have been AL or a SNF, that would have generated more trips? I'm going to let because, wait, And I ask that because you're, you made a statement a little while ago that's saying there's going to be more jobs created now. Jobs and trips before. are two separate things. Well, I understand sure. it very well. I've been here eight years. I understand how that works. Thank you. Um, but I do question that because in an assisted living facility or a skilled nursing facility, majority of the time, I'd say 97 to 98% of this time, those residents aren't driving. So if you only have a few jobs, how is that, how is that more trips? What do you mean I, a few jobs? I thought well, you said that, that it was such a huge employment well, generator with an ALS. Come on up, Atefi. You're saying there was more jobs now than there were previous, but there's going to be less trips. I'll let but you know the people in the assisted living facility in the SNF don't drive. Go through ITE. And so I'm just I'm just curious where you because those numbers make no sense. All right, let's go. My name is Ali Atefi, uh, Links and Associates, at 5023 uh, West Road oh, wait, Drive, Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. um, so the, these uh, figures do not compare uh, the uh, ALF versus the nursing home. These compare what was approved in, entire, in its entirety of office 80,000 square feet, retail of 30,000 square feet, and uh, 275,000 square feet of AF, AFL of what was approved previously. Mm -hmm. So when you add up the trips of all those uses and then compare it to what is proposed here, then you generate less trips of what is being proposed, if that makes sense. Listen, I, I respect and I appreciate what you're, what you're saying. I'm just making a point that the trips that are going to be generated in AL or a SNF do not compare to what, especially 40,000 square foot of office, if you add that in as well. I mean, you can, because you you're showed us earlier about how many FTEs may be there or employees may be at that site, but... Um, uh, and and that may be, I'm just talking about the overall, what was yeah. overall approved. Versus okay. what's proposed. Because again, remember those people aren't going to be driving. No, they'll have some visitors at the, you know, the AL. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> no, you're right. Hopefully do. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, uh, we're available to answer any questions right. that you have. Thank you so much. And it'd be great if some of those residents get to work there, and then they don't even get out on the road. That'd be wonderful. Uh, all right. So we've heard from the applicant. Does anyone in the audience wish to speak to this item? Do we have anyone online? We have no one online for this item. Okay, take a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, uh, roll call vote again? No. no or is this no. one? This is, this is okay. You're back on All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. All right, then we are on to 85. If I'm keeping this straight. Yes, you are. Item P85 so was published in Tampa Bay Times on July 10th, 2022. Good afternoon, Denise Hernandez, Planning and Development. P85 is, uh, we're asking for public comment on this item. This is OMB 220031. It's a uh, request for public comment regarding, regarding the proposed use of fiscal year 2022 Edwin Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grant Program. And this is from the uh, Pasco Sheriff's Office CFDA number 16.738. As I understand that the amount is $122,040 and the request is for you to just accept public comment. The board does not have to make any um, motion, uh, action uh, on this item. Okay. Uh, do we take public 
comment on this one? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, anyone wish to speak to this? There's no one on WebEx for All this right. item. Then it is, we don't have to take any action, so we'll move on. Is that right? Get my Madam here. Chairman, since we're a little bit out of order, this says, I may think I the suggest that we do the rezoning procedures and swearing in for the rest of the agenda? Yes. Let's do that. There are two rezoning agendas, regular and consent. Staff will present each application no, to the Board of County Commissioners. If staff or planning commission has recommended approval and there is no opposition, the application will be considered by the Board without further presentation. If staff or planning commission has recommended denial or if there is opposition to the application, the applicant will be given five minutes for presentation. The opposition will be given three minutes for each individual or five minutes for a group representative. The applicant will be given three minutes for rebuttal. Any individual disagreeing with staff or planning commission recommendation or anyone wishing to object to any condition of the rezoning may at this time request that the petition be pulled from the consent agenda, in which case that application will be heard under the regular agenda later on during the meeting. Otherwise, all rezoning applications will, on the consent agenda will be approved by a single motion and vote. If you wish to speak to any petition, please give your name and address and whether or not you've been sworn to the record. These are quasi-judicial public hearings. The law in Florida is that mere public support or opposition of an application is insufficient for the board to take action. Please limit your comments to those criteria found within the board's land development code. Madam Clerk, would you like to swear the public in for the remainder of the agenda? Thank you. If you're here to speak on the remainder of the agenda, could you please stand and raise your right hands? The numbers are low. Did we just do it? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Madam Chair? Yep. So nobody had to be sworn in for 96, for P96? Mm. Mm. The, I'm just curious. We didn't do a, we didn't swear in before P96. So do we need to redo that vote? No, I don't believe you need to re redo that vote. Okay. Well. P85, your question P85 was the one that Denise just written for the record, yes. Okay, so we're on 85. Sorry, so my on, notes are a little messed you're up. On, you're on the, con you're, you've the done consent. 85, yes. correct, Denise? That is correct. Yes, that's correct. And, you're, and uh, 86, the continuance is, is next. All right. So item P86 was published in the Tampa Times on June 22nd, 2022. Item P86 is PDD 227563. This item, Palmetto Ridge MPUD Master Plan Unit Development, was advertised as a continuance. The continuance date is to August 24, 2022, Board of County Commissioners meeting at 1.30 in Newport Ritchie. Okay, I'll take a, this is a public hearing. Does anyone wish to speak on this item that is being continued? Is there anybody online? Move, move there is continue. No, second. No one's, second. On, no one's on WebEx. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, P87. Item P87 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on May 4th, 2022. P87 is PDD 227585. This is Eagle 2 Industrial ECMPUD. This item was also advertised as a continuance. The continuance is to the 824 2022 Board of County Commissioners meeting at 1 30 in Newport Ritchie. Who did to continue the contract? Second. All right. Uh, does anyone wish to speak to this item that is being continued? Well, they can speak today or not? It's published continuance. It's published continuance. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, uh, P88? Yes. Item P88 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on June 22nd, 2022. Item P88 is P PDD 227596, Denton Ave MPUD Master Plan Unit. This item was advertised as a continuance to the 1025-2022 BCC meeting at 1.30 in Newport Ritchie. However, it has been changed to a request to continue the item to a date uncertain. Move to continue time uncertain. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Next. <coughs> Item P89 uh, was published in the Tampa Bay Times on June 22nd, 2022. 
P89 is PDD 227614. This is 54 Crossing MPUD Master Plan Unit Development. The item is advertised as a continuance to the August 24, 2022 Board of County Commissioners meeting at 1.30 in Newport Ritchie. Motion to continue. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 P90. Item P90 was published in Tampa Times on June 1, 2022. P90 is PDD 220337. This is a large scale comprehensive plan amendment. This today we're asking that you authorize transmittal to the Department of Economic Opportunity and other reviewing agencies. This is CPAL 22 05, Villages L and M, large scale comprehensive plan amendment to the future land use maps, map 2 15 and sheet 14, 15, 22, and 23. From VMU 3, Village Mixed Use Type 3 to VMU-2B, Village Mixed Use Type 2B, on approximately 1,773 acres of real property located east of Curley Road and north of the Zephyr, Zephyr Hills Bypass. This item was presented to the Pasadena Hills Planning and Policy Committee on June 16th of 2022 and presented to the local planning agency on July 7th of 2022, who found it consistent with the comprehensive plan and recommended approval to the board. Again, this is the, uh, the transmittal of the item to the DEO. So we're asking that you authorize transmittal to the DEO and other reviewing agencies. Okay, is there anyone here wishing to speak in opposition to this? I think, is this the only item we have on consent? One more. No. So, so we'll leave this on consent, P91. And for the record, there's no one on WebEx for P90. Okay. All right, item P91 was published in the Tampa Times on June 1st, 2022. P91 is PDD 22 CU19. This is a conditional use in the name of Angelo Ugenti III, VBBTS LLC, T-Mobile South LLC, for 170 foot above ground level wireless communication facility in an R4 high density residential district. Comes to you with a recommendation of approval with conditions as included in your agenda pan packet from both the Planning Commission and the Planning and Development Department. Okay, um, is there anybody wishing to speak on this item? And I have no one on WebEx for this item. All right, we'll keep it on the consent. I'll Move take a motion for consent. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Second. Great. Aye. Okay. Whatever. P92. Item P92 is published in the Tampa <coughs> Times on July 20th, 2022. Good afternoon, everybody. Tammy Snyder, Planning and Development. Here we have the Arlington Del Mabry MPUD PDD 227569. Here's your location map. The yeah. And proposed as a rezoning oh. request from an MPUD to an MPUD to allow the development of a maximum of 238 multifamily residential units oh and to also change the name from Dale Mabry Town Center MPUD to the Arlington Dale Mabry MPUD. The applicant is also requesting a variation from the Land Development Code, Section 805.6, Restrictions on Wetlands and the Upland Buffers. Uh, the requirement is for a mandatory, mandatory HOA CDD, and the variation request is for the multifamily portion only, which will be under single ownership. And here is the master plan. The colored part is the uh, multifamily area. And here's the complete master plan with the uh, Commercial retail also should. Conceptual. Currently, the subject parcels are known as the Del Mabry Town Center and PUD, and they contain a department store and a bank, totaling approximately 182,745,000 square feet of allocated used commercial retail entitlements. The Planning Commission heard the item at the October 28, 2021 public hearing and unanimously voted to recommend approval. The BCC heard the item at the December 7, 2021 hearing and voted to continue to a date uncertain to be able to have more discussions regarding this project. Generally, vertical mis mixed use is preferred. However, given the amount of retail and office entitlements in this area, the essential missing element is high density housing and reducing such to add more retail office would not be consistent with the concept of mixed use. Furthermore, the land is limited in its development potential due to restrictive covenants imposed by the existing big box retailers and the big box retailers in the area are located within residential future land uses. Therefore, this area has non-residential development encroaching into residentially entitled lands. 
LDC section 402.2.C.8 specifies that variations from the code may be reviewed and approved by the PC and BCC, and <coughs> staff has re reviewed these recommended, the requested variations and recommend approval as they meet the intent of the land development code. The proposed request is consistent with the Pasco County LDC Chapter 400, Subsection 402.2 Zoning Amendment and PUD, and with the applicable provisions of the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan. And with that, the PDD recommends approval with conditions. Okay, and I see the applicant coming up to speak to us. Madam Chair, Clark Hobby, Hobby and Hobby PA. 109 North Brush Street, Tampa, Florida, and I have been sworn. Here on behalf of the applicant, uh, as you heard, this is a uh, MPUD that's existed since 2005. The only remaining partial in the overall master plan is a nine acre site. And it's located almost entirely within the Res 6 flu, which as you undoubtedly know, under the 2007 comprehensive plan, uh, only allows uh, residential land uses. There's a small portion in the ROR section, but that ROR overall area uh, does not have any residential within this area of ROR. The site's been unoccupied since the MPUD was approved in 2005, and uh, since the master parcel and master infrastructure was developed in 2007 and 8. So I think you can probably understand since this is on Dale Mabry that there's something amiss here. And the something amiss and the reason why you see semi-trailers parked on the site in this recent aerial is the fact that there are significant restrictions that staff uh, discussed that prohibit, as an example, the following retail uses on this site. Gas stations, bars, liquor stores, hotels, Secondhand stores, car dealerships, bowling alleys, movie theaters, vet offices, fitness and massage <coughs> clinics, schools and technical schools, and there's a severe limitation on restaurants. So the reason why this site has sat fallow for so long and unused is any of the retail uses that it was set up for, most of which cannot be used. So we can go to the next slide. So you'll see it's hard to read on this site, but this is probably one of the reasons that the taxes were unpaid on this site for eight years. Wow. Uh, there were tax certificates outstanding for eight years, and it was almost lost to a tax deed sale in 2015. We can go to the next slide. And then after that, the lender foreclosed on the site in 2015. You can go to the next couple of slides. Since that time, there still hasn't been any use on the site. So that's going back another seven years. And in the intervening period of time, the county had to bring a full-on code enforcement lawsuit against the property owner. And there's, I think, one more slide. It, it was basically being used by homeless people and as a dumping site for many years. So I think our client, rightly so, wants to do something that's reasonable and is allowed on the site. You can move on one more slide. Uh, you can see this is the overall flu for this area. You can see the majority of the site at the apex is in a residential uh, future land use classification. And pursuant to the 2007 comp plan and the land development code that was in effect at the time the MPUD was approved, it says that it has to follow right now this MPUD modification the current comp plan, which will not allow the retail uses that were originally approved. So the only real uses that are allowed here are residential. And since we're up against a super target and a major power center, the only realistic use is multifamily. So as staff told you, this fills in a residential area. We can move on to the next slide. Uh, this fills in an area that you know needs some productive use and when I got involved, after this originally came to the board, what I was charged with the mission of doing here is making sure that this MPUD was on an equal footing with the other MPUDs that were similar on US 41 that had been to the board uh, recently. And that's what we've done with this connectivity plan. 
The objective of this plan is to make all, this site comply with all of the mudroom requirements that it can without having the benefit of being able to regulate the target site, because as you might imagine, the big box user, user is not willing to take any of Pasco County's further restrictions since they're already built out. The site, uh, uh, I mean, the MPUD, as you heard, went through Planning Commission. No one has objected to date. And again, what we did was create this binding plan, which creates all the walkability, the block sizing, and the trails on site and off site to interconnect to the site such that if we were starting from scratch, this would have met the Mudderham uh, requirements. We've improved the form of development and put it on par with the other projects that the board has approved on 41 recently. And this is clearly a good uh, economically viable use that is going to be the first time the site's been in any productive use since at least 2005. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions the board might have, but I would urge your approval. Thank you. Um, board members, do you have any questions for Mr. Hobby? Madam Chair? Yeah. I'll just say when I first looked at this, I didn't like it, um, but looking at the conditions and the finding of fact number five, especially about target and the restrictions, the list you gave off, it's pretty much, I think, what we're bound we have to do it. Thank yeah. you, Commissioner Mariana. Yeah. Again, I think that's why the site was never developed yeah. all this time. It's been 15 years, 15 to 17 years the site's been sitting like this. You know, this is one of those sites where I, when I look at that Target parking lot and I think of the Target that we have over there on 54 and Little, and there, there are so many spaces that never get a car on it and is that the best use to have a paved parking lot that no one uses i'm just wondering if i see there's some un undeveloped land in front of the target and i just wonder if terry we could look at that parking lot and give some of the space up for more economic activity well to, I, than I i can speak for terry i think in the sense of the parking field that you see there is all a part of the approved um, target center and then was a part of their site plan the yeah. other green space out front is actually within DOT area and that's what's kind of unique about the site those blue uh, I mean blue the yellow trails that you see dashed throughout the area in front of target those are actually trails that exist and they actually broke up the uh, parking field which was unusual in 2009 and create walkable areas mm -hmm. so that the the little dotted lines running through the dot property those are actual existing trails and that's part of the reason why i think this actually meets the mutter on requirements overall so there's a, there's a lot of benefit there already commissioner starkey okay well, i don't see those when i look at the satellite but i'm just saying i think we've over parked some of these developments that could be better used for something else. Um, but I agree, this is a great improvement over what we have going on there. When I look at the satellite, and I don't know when they took this picture, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, probably illegally parked. Um, semis. Uh, semis, yep. yeah. And I'm, probably a lot of junk, too. Yep. So, yeah, so. Um, all right, this is a public hearing. Does anyone want, wish to speak to this item? Do we I have anyone? I have no it? one on WebEx for this item. Okay, it is, this is not a consent, correct? This is to the board. That is correct. Second. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay. We are on to 94. 93. 93, sorry. Item P93 was published in Tampa Times on June 22nd, 2022. William Devine, Planning and Development. Item P93, PDD 22. 7588 in the name of Joy Drive MPUD. The subject site is currently located on the north side of Dog Patch Lane, approximately 390 feet west of Joy Drive, and abutting Joy Drive, approximately 650 feet north of Dog Patch Lane. Here's a look at the aerial view. Here's a look at the surrounding future land use. And here's a look at the current zoning. The applicant is requesting a rezoning from AC Agricultural District and AR Agricultural Residential District to an MPUD master plan unit development on approximately 45.3 acres with a maximum of 107 single family detached dwellings. 
The applicant is requesting variations from LDC section 901.6.D.11 street design and dedication requirements and 901.1.H transportation corridor spacing and special design requirements. Staff has identified the following. The connection to the east is to Joy Drive, a county maintained dirt road will have emergency access only. There are existing homes with driveways along Joy Drive. Emergency access will result in less disruption to those existing homes. An interconnection to the west would also require, excuse me, require a potential impact to a category one wetland. Additionally, the location of a stormwater pond in a natural low-lying spot to the southwest would interrupt that wetland and interconnection to the west and then the southwest parcel could potentially connect to the MPUD, has a floodplain and continuation of the category wetland that would make this project hard to develop. Here's a look at the current master plan. The subject site consists of a single family dwelling and mobile slash manufactured homes on approximately 45.3 acres. The applicant proposes to develop the property with a maximum of 107 single family detached dwellings subject to the comprehensive plan. The surrounding area is characterized by residential development consisting of single family detached dwellings, the Oakstead MPUD, mobile slash manufactured homes, and the Pasco County Animal Service Center. The subject area has, the subject site has a future land use classification of Res 3, and this is coming with a recommendation for approval with conditions from Planning Commission and Planning and Development Department. I'm here if you have any questions. Um, so I don't think I was, I don't know if I've been briefed on this one. Um, I see the applicants coming up, so good. Can you give us a background on this? Barbara Wilhite, 6327 Grand Boulevard, Newport Ritchie. This was a, is a fairly, fairly straightforward project. We're talking about, I had been sworn, thank you. I wouldn't miss that <laughs> highlight of my day. Thanks. <laughs> fairly straightforward project. Um, it's in the Res 3 land use, about 100 and, between 103 and 107 um, uh, single family detached units. 50 foot minimums, there's no 40s. Mm. Okay. Client intends to meet and exceed all of your architectural and monotony control. Uh, that's what Mad Madame Homes does. South Market area, uh, utilities are in place, and we have a unanim unanimous recommendation from Planning Commission. I know there's probably a, maybe a couple people here to speak, so I have my team here, my client, Mac McGraw, I have Ali Atefi um, from Links and Associates, if there's any transportation um, questions. I have the testimony from uh, Chris Williams um, to Planning Commission regarding schools. So if there's any school questions, I'm prepared to answer them. So with that, I will see if there's any public comment. Well, I have a question, and um, it may have been mentioned, but I don't think I heard it. Just knowing that we have the major trail of the county coming up very close to it, and that may be a way that um, some of the kids get to school, we have uh, a stub out to the north that we're required to do on our master plan. Okay. So we'll be connected to our neighborhoods to the north whenever they develop, and they'll be connected to tower. Okay, and there'll, there'll be a trail, not a street. I can't, all I can do is say our project isn't, isn't on tower. We are south of tower. So we will be connected to our neighborhood and our sidewalks north of us, which then will connect to your trail. Well, is it a sidewalk driving. connection, or is it a wider than normal sidewalk connection, or just I'm, a regular sidewalk? I'm not. A, I'm not adjacent to. I know. Tower. What are you? What are you going to step out to your neighbor to the north with? We're going to step out a vehicular connection with sidewalks. Four, five foot sidewalks. Yes. Oh. Okay. That's not optimal, but I think I'd we could do better. But if our planning staff didn't discuss that with y'all, then I'm not going to reshape it here. But I wish they would in the future. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anyone in the public? Any board members, any questions? Yeah, I know we have Christy signed up, but uh, board members, any other questions for the applicant? Okay. Um, we have one. Is this the one speaker? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am Christy Zimmer. Um, 
I am not speaking against this particular project, but what I do want to bring to your attention is the fact that the multiple developments that are being approved, if you do approve this one, along that Lake Patience corridor is creating a horrible impact. From a CACMPO position, we have been asking for a traffic light at Lake Patience and 41 for over 10 years, but we're told it goes, there's going to be a realignment of Lake Patience over to Bell Lake Road. That's not even on the books on the priority list. And we have had, just this past week, five more major accidents at that intersection, including two yesterday with a possible fatality. We have got to address this. I spoke at length with Jensen with FDOT at the last CAC meeting, and he said that FDOT has warranted a traffic light for that intersection, and it's in the county's hands now. Because that realignment isn't even on the books, and we're still approving all these extra projects along Lake Patience that have already been approved, are being approved, and much more traffic being created. Is there a way that the county commission can please expedite a traffic light at that intersection immediately because it is beyond warranted? I, I, I'm not putting that burden on this particular developer. I'm putting the burden back on the county because this is long overdue. Um, what intersection were you referring to? Lake I'm Patience to and, and 41. Oh, 41. And this okay. development is going to be coming out, Lake Patience, as, a, as well as the ones you've already approved and are coming up for approval. Ms. Simmer, can you just state for the record that you've been sworn? I have been sworn. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we'll get information on that red light. I'm curious on that myself. All right. Uh, is there anyone online wishing to speak to this? Uh, no one is online for this item. Commissioner Mar you have other sure. public comments. Okay, Commissioner Mariano has a question, then Commissioner Moore. Yes. Um, I'd like to talk to staff. Liam, I guess. Madam Chairman, I I really Do think you, you ought to finish, finish public, public, comment? Okay. public comment before. Well you I get did. Into There's nobody. Well you got a guy. Oh, I didn't oh. even recognize you, sorry. <laughs> oh, there's people out there. All right, you're allowed. Come on up. <laughs> oh, there's more over there? Okay, why don't you come on up and line up right behind him? Thank you, Commissioner Starkey, yeah. and I've been previously sworn. Uh, my name is Peter Gorn. I live at 4508 Havelock Drive in Lando Lakes. That's in the Marchmont subdivision above the Oakstead community. Um, also a licensed attorney, Florida Bar Number 0122618. Um, I want to thank the committee for its time today. I'm going to speak very plainly. I'm here on behalf of myself and my family. Been involved in litigation for almost 50, 15 years, mostly as court appointed counsel for the government. Um, I'm certainly busy enough that I'm not looking to take up any causes, but um, Ms. Polinitsa, who was present at the last meeting and is present here today, has done a tremendous amount of work on this issue and I believe has laid out very well the concerns to this committee at the last hearing. Um, essentially what we're seeing with our own eyes, as has been articulated before, is unfettered development. Um, the apartments along 54 and the residential housing behind it was mentioned. This is exactly what I thought of when, uh, Commissioner Starkey, when you said sprawl, because um, essentially it's being built with disregard to infrastructure and the ecosystem. With regard to the e ecosystem, it was brought to my attention at the last committee meeting that it wasn't even clear that there would be destruction of wetlands. Um, this is the home of the keystone species, uh, the gopher tortoise. Um, it's a protected species at the very least. And uh, wildlife law is a very dynamic, fluid changing area of the law right now. Um, personally, myself, just on the information I've gleaned in the last couple of days in my spare time, I have a lot of questions. I'd like the opportunity to review um, Mr. Devine's plans, and I, I expect that uh, I'll be able to do that. But my understanding is that many of the people that are going to be affected, including the people who live on Dog Patch Lane, um, don't even know that this is going on, and the feasibility of <coughs> of uh, five foot sidewalks, um, as others could tell you, is just not feasible. Um, so at this point, I'm, I know it's one minute. Right? <laughs> so at this point, I'm objecting to the rezoning. We have a petition with over 100 signatures. Community members will be directly affected by this. I'd like to acquire the plans to make sure they're in compliance with state and federal law. And I am asking the community not to approve the rezoning. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if Mr. Polonitz, I would m like to make any further comment. Um, but yes, the traffic issue, as we previously mentioned, is beyond horrible. 
right now? And the answer is not more unfettered development. It's, um, it's getting the infrastructure in place. Thank you for your time. Thank you. You know, I've heard this comment a lot. I will speak, go ahead. Sorry, and I think someone else has come up to speak about infra uh, infrastructure in place, but infrastructure always follows development. Far, I think we had one interesting anomaly that was State Road 56 when we had a developer who uh, got a, the state to help pay, give us some money ahead of time to build out the extension of State Road 56. But typically, um, we don't collect money ahead of time to build infrastructure. It follows development. So that's just the standard way of the way America develops. Otherwise, your taxes would be really high because that's where we would have to get the money to do the infrastructure if we didn't get it from the impact fees from development. So it's sadly, the infrastructure is the tail wagging the dog. I guess, is that the right expression? Okay, so um, you want to speak to us today. Um, name and address for the record. Okay, this is Sean Moore. Hello. My Sean, we need your name and address for the record. Okay. My neighborhood is one Sean, big neighborhood one. Your name and your address. What? Your name and your address. Um, four, four, question nine. Okay, were you sworn in? Yes. Yes. Okay. May 1st, 1993. You, you can lower that mic if you want. Okay. okay. Wait, one more says, question nine. May 1st, 1993. Okay, that's all. My neighborhood is one big neighborhood watch, not the official kind. We look out for each other. It said, now we can get police cars in our yard, police helicopter right over our palm trees, too many houses, there's a bad guy came in the skies in our yard. My neighborhood is more than a place on the map. My neighborhood is my heart. In my neighborhood, neighbors are more than just the people who, who live next door. In my neighborhood, you can still find the middle of nowhere and we have lots of dirt roads and dumpsters. Um, Ma'am, can we get your name and address yes. for the record, please? And that you've been sworn. Yeah. I'm Debbie Moore, 4116 Kristen Lane, and yes, I was sworn in. And my husband is Edward Moore, that I've talked to you about before, how he has tried so hard to defend this neighborhood. Our daughter was Kristen April Moore, and I didn't bring any emotion into this the last time because I thought that rational stuff was going to cut it. But no, you guys don't know this land at all. You haven't walked it. You don't see it. Even the county people I'm talking to, they don't know the land. Liam tells me, oh, you're not rural, you're urban support. And we live on six acres, the neighbor's on 20. We have wetlands all around us. If you put That's that aerial map up, please, again, and look at it with a little more depth. And I have the Lake Patience study for the road expansion. My husband too. has that from years ago. I, can't see I have the stormwater flood drainage maps. This is all from 2006. When Oakstead came in, us citizens, we tried to sue Oakstead for not putting the wildlife stuff in like they were supposed to. Kristen Lane is an official wildlife connection zone. And you guys act like 20 acres is so nothing, but it's in the middle of hundreds plus acres of wetlands. And it is tight. I didn't think, I thought the new land up the road here was not quite as offensive as what you've done to us in this You need road. to stay at, ma'am, stay at the mic. Yeah, please. we need to get you on record. Thank yeah. you. Anyway, when we were here last time, you gave a, a continuance for a pothole in the road. And Catherine, you're in the background whispering, when can we vote? And then you say, I don't think I'm going to be able to stay for the vote. And then, boom, we're asking questions. People are answering. I wanted to appeal that decision so bad. And everybody talked me out of it. It's like, it should have been appealed. Anybody want to hear that bad? conference? September 28th, 2021. I'm sorry. It's very, very wrong. And it's kind of ironic because Oakstead was September 28th, 1999. And everyone ignores that, how we raised hell so much to not get that kind of impact onto this wildlife, onto this land, onto this 
primitive swamp of the alligators still across the road. I don't know where you're going to put sidewalks and prevent the kids from coming across alligators because they do come out. We do lose dogs and cats. And if you will look on the map, at the, at, can you put our map back up, please, and show up close the swamp road? It's not a road where you can just drive around and put sidewalks. It's, it's, there's no shoulder all the way down the patient's road. People right now are walking in puddles, wet shoulders, mud. It's, the road is so dangerous. And now the construction of what was it called? The pines, what's it called? Whispering pines, yeah. They burned down hundreds of acres of pine trees. Now it's all dirt, now there's all pipes, there's construction. Lake Patients Road is so dangerous for coming today. I've got, I've got it on my phone. Wait, ma'am, you gotta stay at the mic. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. pictures on my phone, but you guys need to go see the area. This should not just be a decision that you're making. The one you made already is so yeah, wrong, and I still would like to appeal that, if that could possibly be done. Some kind of litigation, conservation areas, if you're not considering the wildlife that was approved to be taken care of there. And I have so much information that my husband collected, and if he hadn't died, I don't think this would have happened. He'd been in every one of your offices, and you would have understood it. Stay at the mic. You gotta stay at the mic. What I don't understand, Catherine, that you had to rush the vote that day. You, you're whispering, when can we vote? And then you're whispering, I don't know what I'm you're not going to stay about. for the vote. The, the September yeah. 28th, 21, 21, about the Joy Drive Grove, that nobody knows anything about the land. That's why I'm so angry. I okay. wish I had gotten Thank dragged. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish I'd gotten dragged out of the courtroom and been on TV, because we'd have got publicity, and this wouldn't be happening. All up. right, thank you very much. Does um, anyone else wish to address the board? Okay, come on up. Uh, give them a second to get the, gather their things. Doesn't matter what said today, it's already done. It's been done. Ex parte communication means that we are screwed. That's all. Excuse me. We're thank you. happy with you guys and what you've done. We used to get like friends to the green right there, and all of a sudden. Okay, um, can you um, step away so we can have the next speaker? Thank you very much. Oh, we're going to get a close up view. Thank you. Thank you. Should not ask to have been in the whole land anymore for Indians. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Hi. For the record, I was sworn in. You can lift up the mic. There you go. Thank you. My name is Catherine Baxter Polinitza. I live at 4544 Havelock Drive um, in the subdivision of Marchmont in the neighborhood of Oakstead. Um, I'm here on behalf of uh, all of my neighbors. I, again, I have around 100 petition signatures um, to hopefully stop this development. Um, per the last meeting, I think we were able to see a lot of things that were not expressed. Um, I had multiple neighbors who will be directly impacted by this subdivision being built, reach out and have absolutely no idea this was happening. There was no letter sent to them. People who live on dog patch lane reaching out to me directly had, having no idea that this was going to uh, proceed, um, that this was even in, in the realm of possibility. Um, I think that our environmental impact, um, as stated from Barbara last time, there actually will be wetland uh, disruption. <coughs> they will be ruining our wetlands. And you know, it said it's just, it's just a quarter of an acre. It is still a quarter of an acre. And to allow these, um, allow these uh, gopher tortoises and animals to have healthy, sustainable lives, they need the wetlands and they need the um, they need the ability to flow back and forth from these wetlands. And when you build a development like this, you're taking away a lot of their land. Um, I think there's a lot of issues as well as with our schools. And I know we have people here to address that. However, I know firsthand our children at Oakstead Elementary are already in portables. We have two more developments with over 300 homes being built in that same area with no, no uh, help of building a new school anytime soon. Where are these children supposed to go? Then you're adding in another homes, another 100 homes with the expectation of these children have nowhere to go. Um, I believe that our children should have the right to a great education and with overflowing schools and under, underdeveloped um, infrastructure for the schools, you're setting them up for failure. So I plead with you guys to hopefully halt this um, on behalf of all of my neighbors who cannot be here at t on a Tuesday at 1.30 in the afternoon, um, I speak on behalf of them, and yeah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, can you tell me what, I've been trying to find it, Havelock? Yes, 
So 4544 where, Havelock Drive. How, how are you spelling that? H-A-V-E-L-O-C-K-E. Oh, C-K-E. I don't know. It's not showing up here. And how long have you lived in the area? We um, are originally from Fort Myers. We moved to the area in 2019, purchased our house so in 2020. So three years ago. So yes. were you, so, okay. Well, that answers it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, let's let the applicant, oh wait, is there anyone else here that wishes to speak? Yes. Okay, come on up. And if there's anyone else, please line up behind her and that's gonna be the end of public comment here. Do we have anyone online? No one's online for this. Okay, second. so unless someone stands up and gets behind this young lady, then you're gonna be the last speaker. Thanks for calling me young. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Pat Rubrecht and I live at 4556 Mitchell Road. My road is right off of Lake Patience Road. If you can tell me if you've been sworn. No, I was okay. not. Then if you would please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so help you God? Yes, Thank you. I do. Um, the road I live on is right off of Lake Patience Road, which will be impacted by this new development. My biggest concern with this new development of 107 homes is the impact of traffic on Lake Patience Road and the impact it will bring to our already overcrowded schools especially Oakstead Elementary School, which when it opened 10 years ago, opened with portable classrooms. I also worry about the additional traffic in front of the school. There's going to have to be more buses to bus these kids from these new subdivisions on Lake Patience Road and this one on Joy Drive. We already have a shortage of bus drivers. Not to mention the additional cars it will bring with people taking their kids to school. The traffic is already terrible right at uh, the beginning of school and end of school. Um, a previous speaker already a previous speaker already spoke about my concern about the intersection at Lake Patience and 41. Unfortunately, I saw one of those accidents yesterday. It's a common occurrence. The developer has purchased 3.5 acres to gain entrance into the subdivision on the 40 acre block. However, as I understand it, only 24 acres of this property is usable as the rest are wetlands. Therefore, including the road structure, you're cramming 107 homes onto approximately 24 acres, including the road coverage. That's one house per every one sixth of an acre. We moved to Pasco County about 16 and a half years ago to get out of the busy, hectic Tampa traffic. We liked it out here because it was rural. Since then, of course, we've seen a lot of develop development which didn't impact us so much as this one will. This one will because of the, the other two subdivisions, Palti with 400 homes and the new subdivision with the rental homes. Lake Patience and Oakstead are two lane roads. So if, you know, there was one car per house, that could be 700 more cars traveling Lake Patience and Oakstead Boulevard. I just feel like uh, you're cramming this into sensitive wetlands surrounding Lake, Lake Patience and Little Lake Patience watersheds. I live on Little Lake Patience and it has been cleaned up and improved over the last 10 years and provides a nice community for the old Florida homes. This includes the huge population of deer that roam freely in everyone's yards and wetlands in this area is a huge natural habitat, not only for the deer, but turkey and gopher tortoises. This land is irreplaceable and does not deserve a high density subdivision. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I think that was our last speaker, so we'll have the applicant come back. I, what, and I am kind of curious, what is the future plan for Lake Patience, if anyone can answer that at some point. Thank you. I'm, I'm hopeful, staff, or maybe Ali yeah. can talk about Lake Patience in 41. It's quite a distance from our yeah, project. Yeah, it is. Um, and I would assume that your students won't need to be bused to Oakstead Elementary. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so when the issue of schools came up at Planning Commission, uh, Chris Williams was there um, and spoke to the Planning Commission. It's a little difficult because he's not here with you all, so I have to relay, you know, we typed up his, his, his testimony and we'll relay it to you. 
But I can tell you when it comes to schools, we get asked about it a lot. Before we make an application to the county to rezone property, we make an application to the school board. They know every rezoning that's going on in your county. Then when a construction plan comes in, they get an application again. And so they know exactly when houses are coming online. So they are working hard to get the schools in place. Relative to um, what, what Chris Williams explained is that they're constructing a new K through eight um, school and it's going to take all of Oakstead's boundary that's currently south of 54. So that'll provide significant relief to Oakstead. These are his words, not mine, at the time and also to Bexley. He said, we are hoping that that K-3 school of enough capacity that others will be able to cho choice in to that school as well as um, they might want to have that K-3 experience and that'll add additional to relief to Oakstead as they choose to go to that new K-8 school they're working on. So they're looking to expand the drop off and pick up loop at, at Oakstead and add some capacity. He said that our project at the most will add 20 elementary school students if they all elected to go to public school at Oakstead. He says many students are choosing, they're seeing them choose magnet schools and charter schools. So the, ma the vast majority of growth in the Oakstead boundary is finished, but there is still some growth coming to Oakstead, but the addition of the K-3 school to the south of 54 by Ballantrae is planned to provide a bulk of relief to Oakstead in a couple of years when our houses will be coming online. But I thought it was important to share to you, share with you, because we don't have anybody from the school board here, but that's the testimony um, that he gave to the Planning Commission. And they also object, didn't object to the project and actually voted, recommended, voted to recommend to you all to approve it. As far as notice goes, when uh, Madame Holmes first put this property under contract before they even came to me, Mac would explain to you that he sent out notices to all the actual neighbors on Joy and as well as on Dog Patch and uh, wanted them to call him if they had any questions. And he had a couple of folks that called and asked questions. We have not heard from any of those neighbors despite specifically noticing them again, I noticed them again, and we posted the property. We go through extensive list of species review in connection with an MPUD and we have quite a few conditions of approval. We are completely compliant with the land development code in that regard. We'll be, we'll be reviewed again when we come in with construction plans because those listed species surveys are only good for 18 months. A little unusual of this project is that our category one wetlands have to go into a conservation easement. Um, I haven't seen the county uh, in implementing that on projects, but that's what we'll have to do. We have a small impact, a 400 square feet impact to a wetland on site, but other than that, the rest of all of our wetlands and their buffer are going to go into a conservation easement. We've gone through all of the who, who manages that easement? I guess I'm going to find that out because I have not, the county's never asked anybody for a conservation easement. Uh, yeah, goes, I'm not familiar with so that. So I'm, I'm, interest, I'm interested in that process as well, but, but I haven't gone through it yet, so. Okay. We've gone through all of the requirements for our road review. We have substandard road improvements that we'll need to make to uh, Dog Patch and Joy Drive. At Lake Patience and Joy Drive, that intersection, we're going to work with MI and the county to do a left turn lane improvement. So our traffic and MA's traffic and will be not, no longer in the lane of travel um, as they turn left into Joy Drive from Lake Patience. As you heard one of the speakers talk about, MI did have a project approved, um, a similar type project on Joy Drive in 2021. And uh, they're working, we're working together with the county to, to put that turn lane in. We're consistent with that project approval. We're consistent with our Res 3 land use. Your vision for this property is the South Market area and your urban service area where you, where you want to have development. You have utilities in place, um, which is, supports the level of density. We are not cramming anything in. We are doing a three units per acre project um, with 50 foot homes, monotony control and architectural details and all the things that uh, you're asking for projects to do today. We would ask for your support today. We have gone through the process. We followed the process. It's a long process. Um, we've answered all the questions. We've, we've done everything we have to do to move this forward and uh, we'd ask for your support. Okay, and um, the density is R3? Yes, three units per developable acre. And um, I know you used to be assistant county administrator and you were here when we did 
I mean, attorney, mm -hmm. not administrator, sorry. Uh, this is not sprawl, right? This it, is it infill is, It is not, that's correct. Yeah. For yeah. following your utility policies, you actually have a policy where you have central water and sewer, the minimum density is three units per acre. So that's why where you have utilities, you see res three land uses, res six land uses, because the minimum density when you have made that public investment in infrastructure is three units per acre. So we're sitting right at that minimum for the infrastructure you have in place. Yeah, so. Madam Chair? Yep. Um, Barbara, that, there's a neighborhood to the northwest. Is it uh, Havelock Drive? That's that part of Oakstead, I think. That's, that's part of Oakstead, right? Yeah. There. So those are smaller lots. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those are smaller lots. About yeah. how small? Yeah, Oakstead's very right? similar, very similar development. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks pretty similar to what you're proposing. And we do have a large Category 1. I, I got off on this conservation easement thing. But in between those Oakstead houses, homes, and our homes, there's a large Category 1 wetland there. Um, you can kind of see it in the darker green. So you can see where those homes are, and then you can see the darker green is the wetland line there. Um, I can see it, just, but I'm sure you can it. see it too from the aerial. So there is that large Category 1 wetland is on our west side, and I think Liam had mentioned that's why we're not providing any connections to the west because of, um, because of that large wetland. So they have a large buffer there. And we will comply with all of the listed species requirements. I mean, I wrote all those, <laughs> so yeah, I, yeah. I know them well. Thank so, you. And I think you, Madam Chair, just, and I think when it came to the, um, it was part of about the traffic signal, I think that's something that, um, I don't know if anybody's here from the, MPO or not, but we can put that on the agenda for the next. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, uh, I can speak. To that it won't word. make it tomorrow, but to the to the we're in August September MPO meeting. Let's look at that and see where that is. That's fine. We're um, currently I know talking. It's far away from this project. So you can't obviously ask the uh, the developer of this project to obviously pay for a single that's I don't know how many miles away. Is but at the same time, it's something that we should bring up and look. I don't disagree. So we should uh, look at moving that forward. I know where. Um, Close to where I live, there was a single that, that took 15 years. <laughs> so to get put in, even though it was approved, it took yeah, a long time. Yeah, I am time. curious about that. It, looked, it, long, it took a long time to get there, and then you know everybody felt the pain. So um, yeah, if we can, thanks, Mike. We can. Yeah, we're get very on this close. September mm -hmm. agenda, that'd be great. Thank you. Frankly, I'm looking at Dog Dog Patch Lane. Um, yeah, I think there's some interesting, maybe on lawful businesses going on on dog patch lane so i would send code out there to take a look uh okay it, it, there's no one else here or online and it is to the board madam chair yeah um you asked a question about how wide is the path going to be and looking primarily are most of the residents going to come down to the south to get out yes In Okay, so you got a narrow stretch. I, I don't see a site plan as far as where the homes are going to go, what's laid out, but uh, could you put a wider trail, like an eight foot trail, instead of a five foot trail? Well, we don't, we're not at site plan, but where are, are you thinking the trail? Well, if everyone's going to go down to the south to get out, five foot trail, especially yeah. with kids. It's one, it's one rider at a time, or one, one walk, maybe two walkers, but it's. It's, not, it's the very minimum you would want for any kind of multi-use. So I don't know what the layout looks like. So. Yeah, it's only 107 homes, though. For yeah, but it is, it is connecting to the master trail to the north and the elementary school to the south. So the kids who live in the development just to the north of this, when that comes in, are going to want to go through here to get to that school. So. Um, it's hard it would be dangerous for them they'd be riding in the street because it's hard to ride on a little a five foot sidewalk that's just it's better if you could figure maybe put the sidewalk on one side i don't know but again i don't know what the site plan looks like but right. i'm saying that's just the the minimum and that's why i brought that up mm -hmm. yeah no you no nope. thank you <laughs> I think, okay. I think it's really hard to site plan a project at, at this stage. Yeah, yeah, that's why you know, I'm not going to try. We all have sidewalks on, all roads require sidewalks on both sides, and, and so. Yeah, I, I just what are the amenities in here? Uh, and it, it's, could a multi use path somewhere in here be an amenity, or? I just don't know. It, we have not laid the site out. All right. So. Well, just keep in mind that 
you, the, you know, the, there's, we want there to be access to the school, and we want there to be access to the trail. I mean, especially we get children now that, that don't get bus service, they get more kids traveling. This is like something that I would think the school board would even ask for. I don't know why they wouldn't have. But I mean, that, that type of access has got to be a good thing for the community. We just had one on uh, 5A Road, by the library coming in. They went from a five foot to an eight foot. Yeah, Because the trail foot. was going to come in there. Yeah, eight foot, yeah. I mean, is, is you, is you, So I think the developer's sitting here. Is the developer that willing to put, builder, put an eight foot, eight foot path or no? So he's hearing us. Did, will it come back to us for site plan approval? It will not. It will not, mm -hmm. okay. So we gotta, we gotta ask for it now. You're, you're trying to plan a project that we don't have, you know, it's hard to well, plan a project. This is a very small project. Yeah, but an eight, foot, an eight foot would be really good on one side, not both sides. I, I don't know what, we don't know what the, the layout looks like and we're not gonna see it. We don't, but if it's, how do you want to word that? I got 20 kids coming down to school in the morning. They're coming down that one well, way. Well, you got the neighborhood above it, too. That's And the neighborhood above it. I mean, it's not a bad thing for a, a nice trail in a, in a neighborhood. As a matter of fact, look at Seven Oaks, how great that place is. Nice wide trails. Starkey Ranch. The students to the west, are they going to, there's no connection for them to come into this neighborhood to go on that sidewalk. So where, what way does, does Havelock even travel? Because I do agree that we need sidewalks, especially with our students not being able to be bused to school. There's, there are sidewalks. We're just saying, no, we're to go can it be a wider sidewalk? That's all. I mean, sidewalk is the minimum. To answer your question, com Commissioner, um, there will be no connection to the west. So if you're thinking there's connection to oh. Oakstead to the west, yeah, there won't be any there. because there is that category one wetland there. So I think what they're referring to is the parcel above that would have connection. That's not currently developed. Oh, it's not there. Thank you. And Commissioner, I stopped you from asking a question to Liam before. I don't know if you remember what it was. Um, to go back to public comment. No, that's okay. okay. And I, the applicant I mentioned at one point, I thought that they were improving dog patch. So would the sidewalk go down in a, a long dog patch? Or where would the sidewalk be? So we had not done our improvements to dog patch or Joy Drive. But if you're talking about internal sidewalks, because that's what we're, we're working on, I mean, I think the problem is we gave up an easement on our east side, because the folks on the east side, their road, doesn't sit on their property, it sits on this property. So we're just, a, what happens is between those wetlands and the easement we gave up on the east side, it's really hard to site plan their project here. Um, and if you put a firm re requirement in and then they can't do it because we're squeezed between those wetlands and the, and the easement that we're giving to the Joy Drive folks because they don't have their road on their own property, it's just, Pretty scary to my client to to make that leap. Is there sometimes a sidewalk? It's, sometimes it's easy to make leaps. We may, I make leaps here with you all the time. It's just this one's difficult to make that leap. Well, uh, is there a sidewalk on Joy Drive? No. Okay, so this is going to be one of those. It's not his responsibility, but this is going to be one of those deals where we're this is going to get added to our safe routes to school list, and we're going to have to put a sidewalk on Joy Drive. So we'll have, to, we'll have to plan for that. And we, we there's will. going to be a lot of that um, as we infill in some of these areas. Well. Move for approval. Yeah, I agree. Second. I mean, I think it's going to be up to us to try and put something on Joy that see if the county can't come and put something on there. But, but why would we ask now? We're in development stage right now. They can design it right now. It's very inexpensive for them to do it. If we got to do it, you know how many projects we have on the, si on the sidewalk that's for over 20 years in the MPO? And now we got more coming with all the new terms of schools? Did we approve the project that's north of this project already? No. You've approved okay, the MI well. project, which is south and east. 
I mean, at a minimum, we should look at it from one side of the de development or the other side, from around the sidewalks, connecting from the southern part to the northern part, you should be able to find at least one side of the tr development to put a trail through. You can have 100, 200, uh, 20 kids going to school, one trail, and then who's ever gonna come above? This is the time to ask. So um, can we ask for to not put a sidewalk on one side and combine them both on the other? I'm asking Terry. Or four foot on one side and a six foot on the other, or, I mean, that's. Well, let them, are they gonna answer first? Let them answer okay. first. Hang on, hang on, Brad. Oh, just a master, yeah. Brad Tibbon, Planning and Development. Um, Joint Drive would most likely be considered a substandard road, so there are some processes to handle how the substandard road is, is done. Uh, and this development is, is not a, a large development. Right. It, it's only uh, 100 units or so. Uh, so that would be something that would be done with a contribution towards the substandard road. And you can look at all of the different areas there to see who would need to contribute to that. The county probably with the school uh, upgrades for the sidewalks would also need to be a part of that. What happens within their site, um, the MPUD, you can obviously request whatever it is that you would like to see there. Um, and we, you know, when it comes to the design and the, and the site review stage, we'll, we'll certainly implement that. Uh, but off-site, uh, it gets a little bit more tricky there um, because of the size of the subdivision itself. So this is, you know, the challenges we have when we have sub little pockets of developments come in and uh, we can't, it's not fair to burden them too much with what comes in, but we, we need to have an overall plan and they have to be they have to be part, somehow be part of that plan. If it's to pay in to build a multi-use trail along Joy so that those students can actively and safely get to get around or anybody, then th that, ne that needs to be part of your plan for the area, in my opinion. Mr. Madam Chair, Young. this is a master plan unit development. That's the zoning category we're going to, right? I can't recall the last one I've seen where we didn't see at least the plan, the layout, where it was gonna go. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've never yeah. seen this before. Well, yeah, this is the normal process, but um, that, my client has agreed to make one of his sidewalks that goes north to south uh, eight feet instead of five feet, and we can put that in the MPD conditions, and hopefully it'll all fit. I want that. That's great, but we're going to have responsibility at the end of his project to get it further on. I mean, but, but it's good to have that piece, and we're going to have to put that same responsibility on the development to the north so that the residents in this development can get up to the trail and safely use a multimodal way to get to work, to the park, to whatever. So I'm I appreciate sure I'll that. My, I'll amend my motion then yeah. to um, add in the eight foot sidewalk on one side of- One side only. Internal yeah. to his project, yeah. yes. Not on everyone, just one. That's, okay. yeah. that's my motion. Yeah. All right, second. Excellent, thank you very much. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Remember that for the one to the north. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. All right, we are on 94. Yes. Item P94 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on June 22nd, 2022. William good. Devine, Planning and Development, P94, PDD 22 7626, in the name of Vincent. Housing Corp, Inc., and Ozabin, um 4. It is the zoning member from C2 Commercial District to MF1 Multifamily Medium Density District. The subject site is located on the west side of Osteen Road, approximately 635 feet west of Massachusetts Avenue. Here is a look at the aerial view. Here is a look at the surrounding future land use. To the north is ROR and Res 12. To the east is RR and Res 12, and then to the south and west is Res 12. Here's a look at the surrounding zoning. To the north is C2, to the east is AC and C2, to the south is MF1, and to the west is MF1. The subject site is currently undeveloped on approximately 2.8 acres. The applicant proposes to develop the property with 30 apartments in conformance with the MF1 multifamily medium density district standards. The proposed Osmond Village 4 is comprised of 30 apartment units consisting of 15 one-bedroom and 15 two-bedroom units for individuals and families with incomes less than 60 AMI. 
Access to the property is from Osteen Road, a county maintained local road with approximately 50 feet of right of way, which varies. Um, the surrounding area is characterized by commercial and residential development, and the subject site has the future land use classification of Res 12. This is coming with a recommendation for approval from Planning Commission and Planning Development Department. Thank you. Um, is there an applicant who wishes to speak about this? No? Interesting. Everybody here? Okay. But I'm sure, is there anybody here for the applicant? There is someone oh, okay. here, but I, I... I'd like to ask the applicant a question if they want to come Okay. Up. Will the applicant uh, come up for a question? Okay. Hello. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. I'm Michael Raposa. I'm the CEO with Vincentian Housing Corporation, uh, 384 15th Street, St. Pete. Michael, I, your company does a phenomenal job. It's a phenomenal yeah. project that's going on. Thank I just you. want to ask a question. I, uh, at my Rotary Club this past week, we had a presentation done by one of you gentlemen, did a phenomenal job, mm -hmm. told us a great story, and really got everybody energized about how great this project is. I just want to ask one question if it's done or it's not. I didn't even ask because I just didn't ask the question, but I'll ask you. When you're picking your residents, and I know you're a regional group, Look at all that. are you going to focus on PASCO residents first or is it just first come, first serve, however it goes? So fair housing standard does not allow us to do any type of regional criteria. It's there's an application process. Now we advertise it here locally. Yeah. Um, and then of course when the applications are made, they have to meet the criteria. Mm -hmm. And then we have to qualify them in the order that we're there. Okay. I can tell you in the other 60 units that are co would be co-located on this might would be project, <laughs> or were all none of them came from any other place to live there. Okay. They were all local. And all of the neighbors have since applied to live on the, the units that are already developed because they're beautiful. Yes, and you're doing a phenomenal job, so thank Thanks. you. Um, the only um, thing that if I could, I, the numbers that the staff had, I'm not quite certain because the county had recommended to us, your staff had recommended to us that we really try to focus on one ones, one, one bedroom, one baths, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and primarily yeah. for homeless individuals. And mm -hmm. I think the one one reconfiguration might get us to 34, 36, or something like that. It's not a major substance, but mm -hmm. um, we are, we are, uh, we have received the first piece of the puzzle funded to do one bedroom, one baths, because that's your, that's the demand right now. Uh, we need, and we need them desperately. So yes, we do. glad to see these coming up. Yeah, Madam Chair. Yeah. I guess. Since we didn't receive a big presentation, and I was never um, updated on this or briefed on it, I'm going to make an assumption from what I'm hearing is that this isn't our normal no. multifamily apartment complex. Is, it, is this like one story affordable housing in the, inside of a neighborhood? So this would be exactly like Ozenham Village Phase 3. Which Phase, is on so they're the, not familiar with that. So, so yeah. on the back piece of the property, it looks, from the outside looking in, it looks very much like a residence in by Marriott. Okay. It's a three-story building um, with the amenities on the first floor. There's amenities in the center of each floor, and then there's apartments on each floor with an elevator connecting each floor. This is an extension of the current project that's already there. So yes. this, Another the, we, phase. Correct. That's correct. Another, so Florida housing. Adding a phase. Okay. That's correct. Okay. And That'd the, be good to give a tour. Offer. Tour. We would, we would yeah. love to give tours. Yeah. I love to give tours. I've been there numerous times. Yeah, I, 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 not, I didn't make it when you had one, so I'd, I'd love to come too. Sure. Okay. So no, I, I've been there. Revitalization for that area. This is helping our homeless population. Okay. In our gotcha. Our yes. Wage our constricted. Elderly and our seniors. Elderly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. I've been I've been ribbon cutting Sarah, and, I, and again, what you do is phenomenal. So thank you for what you do. Thank you. Okay. So is there anyone here to speak uh, against this item, or is there anyone online? No one's online for this. All right. Take motion. Approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, thank you very much. We, okay, 95. Item P95 was published on Tampa Times on June 22nd, 2022. William Devine, Planning and Development. Um, item P95, I have received ex partes from Commissioner Mariano, which have been submitted to the clerk's office. PDD 22-7628 in the name of Jupiter Realty um, Partners, LLC and Lake Lakeshore Lakeshore Workforce Apartments. It is a zoning amendment from AC Agricultural District to MF3 Multifamily High Density District. 
The subject site is currently located on the northeast corner of Dallas Drive and Lakeshore Boulevard. This is a look at the aerial view. The surrounding future land use to the north is ROR, to the east is ROR and Res 6, to the south and west is Res 6. Um, here's a look at the zoning. The subject site is currently undeveloped on approximately 2.53 acres. The applicant proposes to develop the property with multifamily dwelling units with a, a minimum of 30 units for workforce housing in conformance with the MF3 multifamily high density district standards. There is a voluntary deed restriction to have a minimum of 30 units provided for workforce housing. Access to the property is from Lakeshore Boulevard, a county maintained local road with approximately 70 feet of right of way that varies. Um, the surrounding area is characterized by commercial and residential development and the HCA Florida Bayonet Point Hospital. Um, May 17, 2022, BCC approved a comprehensive plan, comprehensive plan to change the future land use to Res 24. And this is coming with a recommendation for approval from Planning and Planning Commission and Planning Development Department. I'm here if you have any questions. And I believe what? we have staff online as well. Okay, uh, board members, any questions? I just think this is a, you know, if you can have people live, work, and play, have the people working in that hospital that can live here, and there's a lot of medical office in this area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, applicant. Applicant. Madam Chair, Commissioners, Todd Pressman, 200 2nd Avenue South, number 451 St. Petersburg. Um, this is request that- Sir, uh, have you been sworn in? Oh, yes, I have been. Thank, Thank you. you. Go ahead. Uh, this is request that uh, previously the land use amendment was approved uh, by the county uh, and comes before you with Planning Commission approval. We also have on the record a letter from the CFO of HCA Hospital, which is right around the court, literally right around on the other side of the property. In support, of the pro in support of the project. Uh, abutting on the north is ROR 24 units per acre. And the uh, immediate buildings and properties are all medical in nature. Um, in fact, including the hospital, there's hundreds of jobs. So these apartments are specifically directed to the medical support staff, which is why we've committed to at least 50% of the units to be workforce level. Um, that's one reason as well why there's a letter from the uh, CFO uh, of the hospital, which um, they're currently having an expansion, which he notes that he firmly supports the application. Mr. Tom Lawhorn, again, is the CFO. He notes the housing for our workforce near the hospital in this case, all the better within walking distance is extremely sought and desired. The application would provide sorely needed housing for our current staff and provide housing for an expansion that is soon planned for the hospital, which actually is underway at this point. Um, and he notes the ability of the applicant to include housing for families that are thrust in the medical crisis located near the hospital <coughs> was, is a tremendous solo. So they are, will be providing one unit that would be for short term or long term um, for, uh, Families, as indicated, would be thrust into a medical crisis. They can stay nearby to their uh, loved one. Um, we have had a number of discussions, uh, and we are in recognition that uh, there are some uh, substandard roadways improvements that uh, we believe need to be further supported. And um, we've had discussions that we would provide an additional $30,000 at the point of review by the staff of the alternative standard, uh, which would be used for additional roadway improvements. Um, the entire roadway improvements that would be required would absolutely kill this project. So we're trying to work with the county in a very positive manner. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. Madam Chairman? Yep. Yeah, the, the road out front is in bad shape. Uh, it is paved. We just had to do some pothole replacement. Um, we never had the support to do a paving assessment. We may do that. Um, in light of that, my Mr. Pressman, I don't want to kill this project. I think it's very important. The hospital is right across the way. It's going to be a very great need. So I appreciate you're willing to put an extra $30,000 into getting the roadway done. And um, very, very, very appreciative of that. Thank yes, you. sir. 
Okay. Um, board members, is that it? Right, is there anyone uh, here wishing to speak to this item? We've had absolutely no negative communication of any kind through the entire process. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Madam Chair, there's no one on WebEx. Okay. Take a motion. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, All right. Um, so we have finished our regular agenda. We're to the board member item. Commissioner Oakley. Yeah, I'm going to work his stuff today, too. So. Tag team uh, there. <laughs> one thing I'd like to bring up is uh, we had a, uh, I'd like to thank Justin Rosler and, and the Solid Waste team for all their efforts during the, uh, leading up to the Lock Street Community Cleanup on July 26th. 11.74 tons of solid waste and 561 pounds of hazardous material were collected at that time. It was a great job by Justin's team, staff and team. So I appreciate what they did. Um, of course, I've been on vacation, so it feels like it's hard. We got to start back to school, I guess. So <laughs> back to work. But uh, one of the things I want to bring up, and I heard about it as of yesterday, and it was a surprise to me, but it's, I guess I want to tell you about it, but yet I want to get y'all to tell me when we directed staff, and I'm talking about for the area in the, uh, just off Little Road, Boys and Girls Club, where we decided we were going to take care of homeless, and we, we had some kind of direction at that time, I don't remember exactly the date, but it was sometime in 2019 or 2020. It's been two or three years, if I'm not mistaken. And the problem I have is that building's closed. It's not being, it's not helping homeless right here now. Yeah, so, so what I, are I, we doing? Here's my problems. I've been questioned by many citizens about okay. how we're helping homeless. Right, so the, the problem is it looks like we're not. Right, so the, the, and Kathy's here, but the residential part of that building is full, um, where the families are staying. It's that office building to the right that, and I brought this up because I've, I've gone to that residential center many times and I've never seen one car at that one stop or whatever it was called. Um, I don't remember what they called it, but it was the right. Homeless Coalition and others were all supposed to be in there, but they all work remote. so. Um, I think Kathy has a plan for that. So I thought, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. Good afternoon, Kathy Pearson, Assistant County Administrator, Public Services. So coming before you very soon at the August 24th meeting is, um, I'll back up. So three years ago, yes, we had the Youth Lane Project. Uh, it was uh, contracted to the Homeless Coalition. The Homeless Coalition, there's two buildings there. One was to be converted into a family shelter. The other was to become a one-stop for housing services. The coalition um, did contract with Catholic Charities. Catholic Charities has been running the family shelter. Huge success. Constantly filled, helping many, many families through that. Commissioner Starkey is correct. The Homeless Coalition has not been utilizing that building. Once we found that out, we approached the county administrator and had an idea about maybe we should move our human services to that building and create the one-stop shop that it should. Uh, Dan Biles, county administrator at that time, said go for it. So we've been working on this for a few months because we've had to contact Catholic Charities. They are gonna remain on the property. We had to break the lease with um, the Homeless Coalition. So that broken lease, I believe, is coming before the board on August 24th. I can assure you commissioners with human services going in that we've already been working with community partners. They are eager and anxious to get in there. We've been working with our facilities department. They have been gracious enough to help us get where the building needs to be, where, you know, as far as offices and moving our furniture and all that kind of thing good in there. So as of October 1st, we will be taking over that building and give us a couple of months. We need to get people in there, get it situated, and we will be opening it as a one stop through the Please county. let us know when that happens, because yeah. I think that's very important. I was very shocked to know that nothing was happening. 
Well, so be clear that we are helping homeless families on the other side. Yes, it's we just are. the office part was not being used. Oh, I understand, but yeah. still. But yeah, I mean, we spend a lot of money. You're expecting and something to, have to be done right, and right, right, right. Yeah, working toward the right there. thing to help. Yeah, get we spend all that money problems. and no one uses yeah. it. It's really we frustrating. We put a lot of money toward <laughs> that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so. Madam Chair, so I wasn't going to pile on. <laughs> oh no! But no, but I don't disagree. I do not disagree with the statements that have been made about the disappointment because for years, and I sat on the advisory board for the homeless coalition. Um, their plan was to go in there and provide, you know, these services, which we all thought was going to happen, and unfortunately, uh, not all. Oh uh, well, <laughs> the majority of us thought it was going to happen. There you go. <laughs> To be clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner. Uh, <laughs> Wait, the services one. are still happening. No, no, we know that. They're We're, just not happening there. No, we know that, yes. The, the builder building's full. The, you know, yeah. to house the homeless is yeah. full. But the services like case management, all those things that we thought yeah. were going to happen there, unfortunately, did not happen. They're doing it from home, well, all of them. Well, we thought the Homeless Coalition was going to be in there. That was the, yeah. that was yeah. the whole... Deal. Them so doing it for home is not what we with, uh, I, I don't disagree with you. So I don't want to, that's it. I know it's, you're bringing it back the 24th. We'll see it then. I'm glad you guys are doing it. I'm glad you're taking it over. It'll, it'll be closer to home now, and, and you guys will uh, be able to work in. And Madam Chair. Cool. Yeah, and you uh, did you explain what you're doing in the offices that you're moving out of? Yes, yeah, so the, right now the Human Services Department is located at the Galen Wilson complex, and the same complex as Go Pasco. So the human services will move into the new uh, uh, youth lane project building, and then we will expand transportation that's much needed for that. Our veterans is still yeah. there, and um, the so building will be advised. Us. So it's a win-win <laughs> for all of us. For us. We get some office <coughs> space. Well, well, since we're going to get that, then Kathy, Young. I'd like to uh, challenge you to come back and tell all Wonder the board members <laughs> about your department and how because you have a lot of moving parts in it and they're all very important come back and tell us how we stand in those departments <laughs> under your guidance you absolutely and i think that's something we need to just it just uplift us and let us know where we're going on something absolutely that we don't hear about all the time yes we okay. definitely will do that right. thank you i thank appreciate you. that yeah we used okay. to have kathy kathy yeah kathy wait uh commissioner fitzpatrick has a question remember under, we're, com we're under commissioner items and I'm just really interested uh, to see what Come resources that you are just planning on offering. Because I know when we went to NACO, they had everything from visitation rooms for foster kids and mm -hmm. our youth. So a lot of youth and outsourced resources. Absolutely. So I, anybody that you all know that's in the not-for-profit world that is looking for some space and want to be part of it, send them to Brian Hoban and myself, and we will make sure we get contact with them, okay? Okay. Thank you. Right, I'm Uncle. done, but you shouldn't pull the uh, string on me and get rid of me before I tell you I'm done. So no, we're coming back now to it's you. Mr. Moore. I did, no, I'm, I was I'm just done. trying to remind everyone no, that we're still done. in Commissioner back Oakley's <laughs> public comments, and we're not going to shortchange him if he has a long list. I, I don't have a long have, list. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. But this one here, we'll have a long well, list. Well, I will tell you this. If, oh. every, if everybody, well, I usually have a short one, but if everybody <laughs> promises to be as short as me, then I'll be short. We all, we all in agreement? Nope. Okay. I agree to that. I'll do this in three minutes. <laughs> First of all, welcome back to school tomorrow mm -hmm. to all the students and the teachers. I know I have some going back myself, as some of you do as well. So some teachers? <laughs> Not the teachers, the kids. Um, <laughs> I, I think we do have a couple slides. Um, I know I know it's hard for everybody to get there, but I know, I, I know everybody was invited. Um, Avalon Park, um, Wesley Chapel, groundbreaking. Um, Great, great event. That's their downtown. I think. Oh, we, so exciting! Yeah, you remember the you remember the downtown? I think we approved it. Geez, in like eighteen or nineteen when Wells was. Here. I didn't hear about so, it. Um, was I gone? What? I said I didn't hear it's about it. It's a TND, it. like yeah. Longley, a bigger. So a great event. Um, they, you know, they had a, a jazz band, people singing, and all kinds of great things. But what's cool about it is actually a lot of people from the community actually showed up. It just it wasn't just contractors and elected officials. It was a lot, I see those people sitting there, they all live in that community already. So it's, it's gonna be great for the area. Class A office space and more, some commercial as well. They even have a co-working space that's coming up as part of phase one. Um, they were very complimentary of Pasco County, I will tell you this. So uh, Biot, Kali, um, and the whole Avalon Park team, they actually praised Pasco County's 
staff. So Mike Cabal, you know, obviously kudos to you and your team because um, that's one of the things you kept going over and over again, how great Pasco County team members were to work with. So thank you for that. Oh, the other thing, um, commissioners, not looking for debate or discussion on it, really. I just wanted to provide some information to correct the record because on May 3rd, we were presented a study for the moratorium um, area boundary, the apartments. The study broke down apartments under early construction. If you remember that, I said there were some issues with it. Um, I even showed a photo of some apartment complexes that were actually very far along. And in that study, they did not, they marked them as early construction not to be done this year. So, so an update, there are more that are actually going online this year that were not included in that study. Um, one of them is the one across from the Grove shopping complex, not the one on the Grove property, but the Grove itself shopping complex. Um, it's actually, they're taking applications and they're moving people in in September. So for example, that was not included in the study. They said it would be sometime in the future. So if you look at where we're at, the report said we have enough deliveries for the next six, seven years. I'm thinking now with that one that's coming online and all the other ones that have the entitlements in that moratorium area, you're gonna look at eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 years um, for sure, depending on what the market does. If the market doesn't come back, then it'll be even further. Um, the Grove itself, it actually broke ground. They already had the entitlements already. So for years, heck, before I was even around, um, they've broken ground on theirs as well. And you're seeing in that area now more and more have broken ground. So again, I just wanted for the record to say that um, there was another instance where that study unfortunately was not 100% correct. And with that, I will end. I had one more thing, but I'm going to wait till next time. <laughs> Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Okay, I have a few things. Right so I don't know what's going to come up first. Um, but I would like to say, oh, that's the backpack drive. Of course, there were many backpack drives and I was able to attend multiple backpack drives and it was really exciting. And I even, my family got to come and help stuff backpacks. And we got to serve our community and I was able to that's hand out additional guy. backpacks for our community. So welcome everyone back to school. And next we can go right into the guardrail. I had a community reach out to me. There had been a couple auto accidents is that actually went through that brick wall there, cement wall, and I was able to help them expedite with Zencat and their our staff to move forward to make sure they have guardrails so now Deer Park will have a safe route to school. So good. Thank you, staff. Um, next, I would just like to mention, I've been getting a lot of calls lately about cleanups. <laughs> And while I was at Regions Bank, I was able to call code and other staff members and it was cleaned up the next day, but um, they are working with different, um, different commercial buildings to make sure that they do have the no trespassing agreements together. And I am happy that code and our sheriff's office is working together and sharing those lists. But again, it was cleaned up the next day. So thank you. Um, the next, now I did get some interesting photos, which I won't share to the public, but you wouldn't have wanted to see them anyway. Um, so I would like to say thank you to the Paso County Sheriff's Office for their quick response in issues in downtown, right on the edge of Newport Ritchie, and also our code enforcement work together to help fix that area up, and maybe we can find some more additional affordable housing units out there from looking at these, so maybe we can purchase some of the units. Um, I would like to go into real quick some of the concerns that our firefighters keep bringing to us, because I would like to say I'm very proud of our Board of County Commissioners that are up here today, and our staff, and Mike Carballa, and Chief Kaysen, and everyone for moving forward, and facilities, and everyone working together, because Station 9 is gonna be opening this fall at the Suncoast in 52. Station three bid, of course, closed today, and we have been moving forward, and Mike Carballa can move forward. So probably a groundbreaking, usually that takes a couple months. Um, stations two and four are out to design and in engineering, and they should be starting construction in spring of 2023. So that's just right around the corner. Those are the four new stations. As for the five rebuilds, station 17 has, we had our groundbreaking last year, and it should be opening late December and early January. Station nine and 17 have been delayed a little bit due to 
materials and construction delays. Um, station 20, we accepted the bid about a month ago and that should have its groundbreaking within a month or two. Station 18, bids closed today as well and we were able to move forward so Mike Carballa can move forward and have our groundbreaking in the next couple months. And then we still have station 19, 22. And of course, once that's finished, we'll be moving forward with um, our training center in fiscal year 2023. So I am very excited to see that all of these stations are moving forward and the majority of them will be built by next year. Thank you. A lot of, a lot of activity. Commissioner Mary Young. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, you, Madam, Madam Chair. You, yeah. Oh, I've had my hand up longer. But, uh, we need to really be thankful for all the citizens we have that we represent here in Pasco County because our citizens are the ones that voted in all these new fire stations that we're getting um, yes. through the bond. That, uh, I think well, Wells, not all of them Wells are from the bond. A lot of them Wells are. was here. 2018. When and that's when it was done. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if the citizens hadn't stepped up and voted that in, we as a commission would have had to because we need them. Yeah. Correct. And uh, we still will need them in the future for all the building we're doing. But we got to be real thankful for our citizens stepping up to take care on some of that burden along with us. Yeah. And when Absolutely. these are done, that our time. citizens will definitely feel the impact yeah. in a positive way. Right. So I just want to make that statement. And of course, the new um, peak hour ambulances that will be coming into place September 19th. So, yeah. Very exciting. Thank you. And to tag onto that, I, I wouldn't mind in a, a presentation by, done by Chief Casson to kind of show what we've done. And, and I'll tell you, as, as a commissioner and from all the boards I've been on, I think from where, where we started even 18 years ago to where we are today, the level of stations, support through the whole fire, fire department has been phenomenal. I mean, this board's been great. And like you said, the citizens voting it in. You know, COVID made it tough, slowed down a bunch of different things, Pro productivity across the board, uh, supplies across the board, getting things through have been difficult. But I think what we've got in play, we're, we're, we're doing it. What that gentleman was talking about today, we're doing all those things he wanted to go do. It's just taking time. And, yeah, I, think, and I don't know if they, get, they, hear, they hear that. I think they hear other things. I mean, so um, we I, did make that one pager and Mike, I'd love to have some stack of those uh, uh, on what this board has done uh, for for that subject in the last, I think we went back five years. I'm not sure, but I, I wanna make sure that you all got a copy of that and keep a copy of that and you can hand it out. Yeah. So that, um, cause it's, it's documented there. Right. And even in the past year, there's been two ground break-ins and in the next couple months, there'll be three more ground break-ins. Right, that's a lot. So. I mean, that's more than, in, <laughs> Probably more, Commissioner Mariano, than any time that you've been on the County oh, Commission board. Absolutely. And, and you know, it took yeah. a few years to get us started on yeah. it and, and put, raising the MSTU, but I would love to see them go back like 10 years. Show, show the last 10 years yeah. what we've done. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been outstanding, I think. Yeah. So granted, the growth were a little behind, but, but we it's have always all that the resources, way. Are the, yeah. the resources there to go, the rescues coming in have been phenomenal, yeah. or will be phenomenal, even the ones we've got already. So I think we're doing all the right things as quick as we can, and I think in a very short period of time, They'd be in great shape. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'd like to talk about a couple of different things. Um, give me one second. And I've talked to uh, <coughs> Administrator Carmella. <laughs> uh, most of your Tampa Bay governments have a full time sustainability or res resiliency position. Uh, and I know resiliency. we don't. Resiliency come in position. We, we've got to come on. Hillsborough's got it. Pinellas has got it. Sarasota's got it. Clearwater, Dunedin, Largo, Oldsmar, St. Pete, Safety Harbor, Tampa. So I'm glad to see we're, we're going that way uh, coming forward. There's also an opportunity like never before Wait, to get. Do we have? We've got one positions there. So we have, oh. a, princi we have a principal planner that kind of has that designation, and we've okay. got a few other staff positions throughout the county that kind of do that type of work, yes. Okay, so but, okay. but if we're going to put a grant in, do we have the title for that person to say? In terms resiliency? of grants? No, for resiliency. We need a resiliency position. Is there a position that that person has got in their title to say that? I don't believe so. Can we so add that? I, if that's what I it takes to get a grant, yes, we can. I mean, if that's can, what it takes, right? we, we certainly can. can <laughs> let's, let's explore that. that. Okay. <laughs> Understood. Please. <laughs> um, and, you know, going through, l listening to different things, um, 
there's an opportunity for a, uh, a C grant agent through the University of Florida. They pay part of it, we pay the other part. Uh, I'd like to have uh, Mr. Cabella bring that back to us. We've already talked about it as well, but I just want you to be aware it's coming. There's a tremendous amount of federal money that's out there, a lot of state money, and I think this C grant thing, one of the things that, we, that I saw that was very intriguing, you know, we talk about the trash out in the Gulf. We've seen different things out there that can control it. Baffle boxes that I've talked about don't work on the coast but there's a thing called a litter box. Now I'll say they spell it litta, litter box, that actually takes the trash before it hits the canal and holds onto it. It's gonna take maintenance down the road, but the, the project looks phenomenal. For all those pipes that we got that just lets water drain in and go out, we can put those along. Uh, there's a position for a Sea Grant agent to go do that, and I want uh, Mr. Carbella to bring that back to go, let, let us get a presentation on it, let's go take a look at it and see if we wanna explore that. Unlike years before, where it's tough to get federal grants, as we know, Tiger grants are almost impossible, this is something that's real that we should be going after to take a look at. Uh, next thing, I want everyone to take a close look uh, to Swift Mud. Uh, and I say that in a way where they, brought, they dropped down their rates this past year, uh, so they cut the taxes down for folks, which is good, but I think it's gonna start affecting our co-funding projects. So it's going to be important, I know. You mean they're going to have less money to match the co-funding? Yes, and there's something else I want to lead to do as well. So we need to make sure we get all our projects through as quick as we can to get them out in the street, to get bid, take a flexible look as far as if we think we can do a project in-house, especially with <coughs> one, that one bid down in Colonial Manor was a million dollars higher. If we look like we can do this in-house, we got the right team to do it, then we should do that in part with Swift Mud's approval, obviously, so we, so we don't lose our funding, but to keep that in mind. Um, and Commissioner Starkey, Chairman, and Commissioner Oakley, you guys sit on the T Tempe Water Board. Swift Mud's afraid, or, or thinks from what I gather, that there may be a lot of money going to Tempe Water for new water sources. I want you to just be careful. Every bit that we're going through may take some of their money that could go to other cooperative stuff. So I just want to be careful that as you guys sit in that committee, just take, take a close look as that comes along. Because I think we still need, to, we still have, we've made so much progress. And, and Mike, you know, you've done a phenomenal job <laughs> with stormwater. I want to still keep this momentum going uh, every step of the way because we're fixing a lot of the flooding. Now we can focus on water quality to really improve the coast. So. Yeah. And I'll say one other thing, the agenda item that was pulled today on the Restorect funding, uh, something very important that was in debate for years on the Restorect Council was about using funding um, that was approved through the Restore Act, uh, whether you can get leveraging of money from the state or the federals. And there was a lady, Sherry Herring from Gulf County, the Office of Budget and Budget Director. She had brought up a point that came at the end of the Restore Act Council meeting, we, the last consortium meeting we had, where pot one money and pot three are now considered non-federal dollars and can be used in matching applications. So no, lo oh, no longer wow. do we have to take it and not use it for the match. The determinations that are out there look to go that way. Now, be a match. the tricky part <laughs> is it does say, she does say that each agency could interpret it differently, i.e. DP or SWIPMA. So it's gonna be something we're gonna need to go work on with our legislators and, and above in Tallahassee to get that change to go because the consortium and treasury both agree that these dollars can be used in matching situations. So it's something we need to we're going to be focused on and going forward. It's a new, it's a new development as of last month and just confirmed. And the reason, again, uh, the reason I asked for that item to be pulled, not that I pulled it, but it's because I didn't want to lose a chance of matching that $5 million with another five. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, the county administrator. <laughs> Acting county administrator. Interim. Um, Interim. Yeah, Interim. I, I gave you the whole title, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, just uh, three quick things. I uh, wanted to uh, let you know that uh, tomorrow our new website will launch, both internally and externally to the county. So uh, it's supposed to be at 10 a.m., so let's not crash it at once. Just, you know, hit it, hit it at some different times there. But uh, that'll be out. Uh, we've seen it. It looks great. It's a, it's a brand new, uh, much, uh, much better looking feel. Also wanted to mention that our emergency management team, uh, members of that, uh, have deployed to Kentucky. Okay. to assist in a two-week endeavor to uh, help uh, with, the, with the flooding out there. It, it, it provides vital support to those folks and also provides good training opportunities to our team members, and it's fully reimbursable, so a fantastic uh, deal there. 
Uh, the only other thing is if I could get board approval to appoint, uh, to remove myself from the FGUA board and appoint David Allen, our very capable utilities director, uh, that would be great. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 You got it. Thank you. Is that it? That's all, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, who's next? You? That would be me. Okay, but County I don't attorney. have anything, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you had your oh, opportunity. <laughs> I, okay. don't, I don't have anything either. Thank you. Wow. Well, right. you're going so oh. fast. I'm going to look for the day. Basically, we're done. Right. And I, I barely have anything. Um, oh, she does. So I, I have a stack of papers back in my office, but since I've been on vacation and I traveled 26 hours yesterday, um, half of what, well, nine and a half hours of which I was trapped in my seat by someone who should have had two seats, could not use my right arm for nine and a half hours. I literally had to eat with my left hand. Um, um, I'm not going to go into it in detail, but I, I am going to um, remember something that the, one of the top guys at the National Association of Home Builders said to us at my Community Economic Development and Workforce Board was that, and, and this was also told to me at the ULI conference, is the United States is three and a half million residents is short. And their capacity is about a million and a half a year. And so they're not keeping up with, with it. And um, there's a national home shortage. And we had this discussion in my committee about, um, you know, homeless. And it's happening. The challenges that we have are everywhere. Um, although uh, one of the gentlemen, actually someone that moved here recently, said that Denver is now the San Francisco of the Rocky Mountains as far as homeless people living in their downtown area. So pretty sad. While I, um, in, while I was in Oregon, I saw the tent cities. Yes, bad. Near the interstates there in Oregon. Yeah, they live under the bridges and oh, yeah. on the highways. That's so, um, but, but, and I, I should have texted her earlier, um, before I left to go out west, I was listening in, in on a conversation and um, I heard one of our local people who um, runs one of the, uh, the 501c3s that helps um, out on the 19 corridor, she had mentioned that in the last 10 days she had 50 families approach her organization for help with housing because they were all about to be homeless because their rents had gone up and they couldn't afford it. And, at, and this was two or three weeks ago, they had placed eight families, they were able to place eight families in motel rooms, which is not sustainable. And I do not know what happened to the rest of those families if they went into the woods or what happened. And um, so we, we, I think we have some big challenges coming to us, especially on our side, because you know it's very dense and that's where a lot of those families that are phys uh, monetarily challenged live. Um, uh, I am having a town hall. I don't remember the date since September. The county administrator will be there. I think Kathy's going to be there. This is this is not a typical town hall for us to bring ideas and information to our residents. This is for us to be able to listen to our residents, uh, specifically in that area of Southwest Pasco County. So, just um, want to make sure we we all get um, understand. Uh, what's going on over there. So um, with that, uh, I'll just talk more about NACO next time. I was very happy to be reappointed vice, vice chair of CEWD and vice chair of international, and I'm on the luck in a large urban county caucus, though I didn't really learn much on that one this time. Mm. So um, with that, oh, one more thing. The national home builder guy said, you know those green boxes that go into subdivisions and have the power it's kind of a some kind of electrical junction box. Yeah, one year backlog. You can't get those for one year. So, yeah. Can I bring up one thing that I, sure. I mentioned to you as far as at, at the NACO seminar, one of the things they talked about, and they had a great economic development presentation. Yeah. And this presentation right. talked about how people nowadays, kind of like what Richard Florida said years ago with his book about, you know, who's your city, the people picking where they want to live first. It is now even more essential that every area looks to attract people for different reasons. People pick to where they want to live, even more so now, and they, and they stated so much the amenities were critical. Boulder, Colorado, they say now, 
so it's outside of Denver, is like the riding capital of the world. Trails. All the trails they have, yeah. just phenomenal. All the extra activities that are out there. So everything we can do to improve our amenities every step of the way is gonna bring jobs, because it's gonna bring people by improving quality of life. That's what they're focused on. So all these years of your trails is like mirrored around the nation right now. Yeah. You know, we, we, our county is so special in that you know, before it was a real negative, ass, negative thing that we had the other counties' well fields. But now those are giant areas of conservation that we can look to as, as like open park space if we, if we access them like that. And I know we're working on a plan that will be coming back to all of us on Crossbar. And, um, and I'd like to see that kind of utilization um, used on all of them, but it makes us a very unique county to have those those large open spaces. So, okay, we're adjourned. Awesome. Thank Thanks. you. Are you going? Ways and wildlife depend on you to keep them healthy. Excess fertilizer, grass clippings, trash, oils, and pet waste wash into gutters and storm drains when it rains. Stormwater carries these pollutants directly into our lakes and rivers, creating a